It's the high school game of the week on Channel 22 Sports. Good evening, everybody, from the Bard Stadium in Costa Mesa, California, home of the Orange Coast College Pirates. Along with Renard Ricks, I'm Lou Stowers, and welcoming you along with Tom Strickfat and the terrific Channel 22 Sports crew to high school football. This game of the week will feature the Losinger Olympians and the Legacy Lightning from Denver, Colorado. Actually, Broomfield, Colorado, which is right up north of Denver, right? That's what we heard. Just the northern suburb for uh, this Legacy team, and no doubt the traveling, uh, we'll see how it's going to affect them in tonight's game. That's right. Both teams are 1-0. Losinger really pummeling the uh, Lawndale Cardinals last week. Legacy just getting by their opponent, Niwot, 16-10. And, uh, boy, the size differential, you look at them on paper, Renard, and that's going to be, uh, how is that going to tell the tale? It looks like it's going to be a rough row to hoe for the legacy team. They look like they probably are outmanned and outsized by, a, I'd say, at least 20 pounds per guy. And no doubt the defense is going to try to take advantage of that uh, weakness tonight. Oh, and I love the way those guys push and shove around all night long. But a quarterback, though, as we focus in on some of the tendencies, Glenn Tolliver had a terrific game last week against the Cardinals, throwing the ball to many receivers and got three touchdowns. And he's going to have to have another big night tonight. Being the young quarterback that he is, I'm sure Coach Tolliver is going to be leaning on him quite a bit to make his offense run. Now on the other side of the ball, it'll be Luke Bublitz, who is uh, – a pitcher for Legacy, and this is going to be his first year under center. Well, I'm really interested in seeing how he's going to handle himself in just his second game as a starting QB, and I have a few feelings that uh, this Luzinger defense has got some uh, special Ds for him to look at tonight. But Bublitz has a lot of targets as well. We looked around, and he uh, had a lot of passes uh, to a lot of receivers, a lot of completions. Well, he seems to spread the ball out quite a bit, and I don't know if that's because he is unsure as to who is really going to step up but uh, no doubt he's going to be throwing it quite a bit tonight, and uh, we'll see if he can uh, hit all of his main targets. And then on running back, uh, Tramel Mitchell, the sophomore for Losinger, taking over for Mark Rogers. Pretty big shoes to fill. Kind of tweaked a, uh, an ankle last week, but still looked really good against the Cardinals. Well, Coach Tolliver talked about this tweaked ankle that he has, and he says he's going to try him and see how well he's running on it. And should he not be able to go as well as he hopes, he's got uh, other reserves that will step right in. And then uh, for the Lightning, Vince Gallego sees their uh, everything. He returns kicks and punts and is their leading rusher. And no doubt this young man is going to be called upon quite a bit tonight because this legacy team has got a lot of weapons, and I'm looking forward to seeing them all tonight, Lou. Absolutely. And the X factor in all of this, we talked about the size, the quarterbacks, the running backs are fairly even, defense is a little bit even as well. But the x man. Aona Cavienga. And this young man, already committed to UCLA, I think he wants to put a staple on this game tonight and uh, show the coaches at UCLA why they are interested in him. Well, it might be more of a hammer, that's for sure. Well, Reynard, I'm already excited for this one. Hey, let me tell you, don't go away. We're going to come back, and this is going to be an exciting game. That's right, because Cal Preps predicted that the, the legacy lightning would win this one 30 to 10 and coach Tolliver said uh, he's got something to prove I don't think coach Tolliver liked seeing that so uh, no doubt he's got some special tricks for this legacy team tonight well let's see if it will be a legacy game the Olympians and the lightning coming up next on channel 22 sports Captains are on the field awaiting the coin toss as it's a beautiful night in Costa Mesa, California. And you can see off to the west, the marine layers coming in and uh, Reynard, all of that heat and mugginess, hot and chewy weather is gone. And I tell you, not a better day for it to occur right here in Costa Mesa. And as you mentioned, it's been so hot the past few days to have a nice cool breeze coming off of the ocean over there. It really feels good up here. All right, and we're awaiting the coin toss out there as you see the uh, referee, Frank Johnson. And it appears. There you see some of the crowd tonight that's traveled Losing all the way down from Losing or Lou. And uh, 
That's good to see them travel with the team. That's right. Uh, some of the Lou, Lou House people, the faithful, have come on. And there you see one of the captains, Otis Jones. And what a big man he is on campus, especially on that defensive line. Also, you see number 57 out there, Sam Williams, who will be starting a defensive tackle. And uh, the other captain, Rasaki Hiltz, along with Ona Kavienga and Glenn Tolliver. And uh, Losinger wins the toss, and they will receive and defend the end zone to our right. That's the north end zone. The wind is blowing in our faces, so it's blowing from west to east. And that shouldn't really play a part in tonight's game other than for the throwing. And I think it's uh, not a strong enough win to really affect either quarterback. So I expect the ball to be up in the air early and often. All right, well, why don't we go over the starting lineups and uh, see what's going on here on offense for Losinger. It will be number two, Glenn Tolliver at quarterback. And uh, Justin Kemp will be one of the wide receivers. That wide receiver will be Dejon Washington. Rasaki Hilt will be the slot receiver. And at running back, or wide receiver, and the other wide receiver, Deshaun Mills. Termel Mitchell is scheduled to start despite that tweaked ankle. We'll find out about that. At left tackle, Patty Lealua. At the center, it will be Jake Malaga Mala. And the right guard, Jonathan Solomon. The right tackle will be Sean Medina. And the left guard will be Eugene Tasinga. And Lou, if you will, the starting defense for uh, Legacy that we anticipate coming out at one of the corners will be number six, Nate per Pickings, rather. At the left corner will be number 31, Cameron Brown. The free safety is number three and one of the captains, Devon Martin. Strong safety will be number 46, John Raphael. And the, one of the linebackers, they call him the drop linebacker, number 20, Enrique Guerrero. Defensive tackle, number 44, Nick Casa. Nose guard, number 72, Sean Jenkins. Defensive tackle, 76, Alan Tucker. The other defensive end, Ryan Paulson. And the two inside linebackers, number two is also one of the captains, Bo Yurko. I think we're going to be calling his name out quite a bit tonight, Lou, along with the other inside linebacker, number 45, Brian Toth. Kip Smith kicks it off to about the five-yard line, where it will be taken there by Losinger as it's picked up and is swatted away as now coming out to about the 40 yard line, a 35 yard return on that ball and a good one. And that was by Tramel Mitchell. And this is the young man that the coach talked to us about early being just a sophomore and looks like he's gonna get to stay in the game tonight to start at that tailback position. So no doubt he's uh, warmed up early and ready to go. A big run to start. And look like if he just couldn't got it, if he just could get his feet under him after you see him make a couple of moves here. Nice hand, nice stiff arm there. And out of the shotgun, it'll be Tolliver, wide receivers, four of them in the package, as it'll be Justin Kemp along with Deshaun Mills, who had a huge game to the near side. As the ball is handed off right away to Mitchell, and it's going to be a six yards, six yard loss for the Olympians. And that defense got right up in the nose of Lou Zinger. Looked like the uh, right nose guard, or I should say the right tackle, didn't uh, stop the penetration, allowed the defensive uh, tackle to get inside. Made a big six-yard uh, loss. It looks like they're going to mark it at about a five-yard loss, Lou. Okay. As they give him a little bit of forward progress. So from the 35-yard line, it'll be <laughs> second and 15. Back to passes Tolliver, and oh, look out, that was almost picked off in the defensive backfield by John Raphael. As Sean Kemp was the intended receiver. And that pass looked like it was almost intended for John Raphael. He stepped right up on that ball, and uh, I think uh, Tolliver's gonna have to have better eyes and get rid of it a little quicker. Near interception there by number six, the right corner. And that's Nate Pickens. So a big third down play I call Justin Kemp, Sean Kemp. And of course, Sean, NBA. I know, I know. <laughs> Let's hope that he doesn't have as many kids as Sean. And Tolliver back to pass, throwing deep, has a man open, just overthrowing his man, and that's Deshaun Mills. Nice throw by Tolliver, led him just a little bit too much, and I think the real problem for the receiver then was he had to turn and readjust himself for that throw over the wrong shoulder, as you see in the replay here. Nice spiral, and just looked like right over the stretched arms, 
number 24. And one thing that uh, the Lightning are doing on the coverage was Devon Martin is they're hitting every time the ball gets in the neighborhood. Well, that's one of the things I think uh, Coach uh, wanted to make sure that his team played aggressive early and not to allow this Luzinger squad to get up. Sardis Geist with the punts takes a Luzinger bounce. Javienga near it and also getting to it is Shamaj Harris. And they're just going to let it die right there at the 22-yard line. So they'll take over first and 10. 10.51 10 left to go in the first quarter. It'll be first and 10 for the legacy, and we'll get to see their quarterback, Luke Bublitz, lead the Lightning offense. Well, you know, I think uh, Coach Tolliver for Lou Zinger uh, really came out, as he told us in the pregame, that he was going to throw early, try to catch this legacy team a little bit off guard, but uh, no luck at the quarterback position tonight, at, uh, at least in the first offensive uh, series, and now we see what uh, Luke Bublitz and the legacy Lightning can do. Out of the eye, has a man in motion coming from the far side to the near side. You see him right there, and it's going to be a handoff to the tailback. Vince Gallegos and really squirting his way up to about the 29-yard line is Gallegos. And I think you're going to be calling that name out quite a bit tonight, uh, certainly according to Coach Voris. This is his main guy in the backfield. He anticipates a lot of big things from him this season, and no doubt he wants to try that defense at Luzinga early and probably wants to keep him honest early. So seven yards on the carry. So it'll be second down and four yards to go. They're gonna, calling it from the 30-yard line. Man in motion, taps the quarterback on his way back, pitches it back to Gallegos at the 30-yard line. It gets hit there, but uh, let's see where the spot is as this one's going to be a first down as it's at the 35-yard line. Looks so like his momentum carried him over there as well as uh, number one. For the defense, that's Nicholas uh, Nicholson Tafu, I believe, for Lou Zinger, who made the stop, but not before he had picked up the first down. Good push and a lot of help up there by a tight end, Bryson Romero, for the Lightning. Now, there is an aspect of this game, Reynard, that uh, we didn't think about. Lou Zinger has never played on a, on a surface like this, at least not that I know of, as we have a flag on the play. And let's see what that is. Delay of game, some sort of delay of game. Wow. I think we may have to ask him exactly what that was. I'm not sure if that was actual delay of game. It didn't seem like it was. Maybe it was an illegal substitution. Well, we'll, we'll, look, uh, we'll look for it here on our on our deal. Don't can't, but it's first and 15, so. at the 30 yard line. So our first penalty of the ball game goes to the Lightning. And of course, Legacy has uh, played many times on a surface Oops. like this. Got another penalty. It looks like the defense jumped off a little early there. Yeah, let's see, someone jumped offside. Yep, yep, they're pointing to the Olympians. Well, that's gonna pick up the five yards they lost in the previous that's penalty, so they'll be back to first and 10 now. <laughs> So defensive offsides, so now we're all even. So that's being a good host, right? <laughs> I guess. They can't afford to do that and give this legacy team any momentum because I'm sure that's what Coach Wurr is, is wanting his team to do early, is get some momentum, show this Luzinger team, even though they've traveled some over 1,000 miles probably to get here, that is not going to stop them from playing their game. That's true. They should be uh, really loosened up by now. Back to pass on the... Roll out is Bublitz. Bublitz has a man wide open. There he goes, the receiver, Brian Romero. Romero going all the way in for a touchdown. Bryson Romero, 6-1, with a big touchdown. Had three receptions last week, and it's 6 to nothing. Lightning strikes in Costa Mesa. And how many times do you see the tight end sneak out pass the cornerbacks and get wide open. I think what surprised him, he's a big guy and he can run. And you saw he didn't let the defense catch up with him until he had scored the TD. And no doubt that's got to put uh, some concern on Coach Tolliver's uh, thinking going uh, into this uh, first quarter. So Smith coming on to tack on the extra points. As you see that there, Deshaun Mills coming in a little bit late as 
Boy, they somehow Romero got in front of everybody or behind everybody. And Kip Smith tacks on the extra point. It's seven to nothing. Lightning on a 65-yard touchdown pass from Bublitz to Romero. And there we see uh, the, the, the shifting around. And that was a, a perfect example of how that offense is working. You, and you and I were talking about it. Uh, looking at the Lightning warming up, we said, boy, these guys are really well coached. And no doubt you saw the execution in that very play there. And, and keep in mind now, this was two penalties that just occurred. And you would have thought Luzinger would have been right there on this, and they fooled around and let them catch them, look like a sleep, thinking that they were going to run it, threw it right over the top like you talked about early. And uh, now we'll find out how Luzinger reacts to being behind early, which is 842 here in the first period. Which is something else we were talking about. Teams in the past that I've covered uh, get down on themselves when they give up an early lead and have, a troub have trouble coming back. We'll see if Justin Kemp on the far side and and uh, Mitchell, Tramel Mitchell on the near side can make a good return out of it. But uh, this Lightning team shows right off. They mean business on this uh, vacation trip. Uh, I don't think it's vacation anymore. These guys look like they've strapped their hats on to play some ball here in Southern California tonight. Kemp gets it at the three-yard line, gets grabbed from behind, could be, a, should be a face mask, but gets up to about the 20-yard line. So a 17-yard return, Mike Kemp. It looked like it was almost a face mask. Apparently he got his hand up around the face guard, but didn't actually, we'll see it here in the replay. And as he's making his way up there, right there, you see the reach in, and I yep. guess- uh, The head just snapped back. Yeah. So uh, that was Nick Casa, Nick, Nick Casa. So, so now we'll see if they can get anything going on the second series. Four receivers in the pattern, but the ball is handed off to Mitchell, trying to get around the end. He does, gets around Casa as uh, he gets a first down to the far sideline at about the 34-yard line. So a good run by Tramel Mitchell gets to the 35-yard line, 15-yard gain. And there again, you see one of the things we talked about early, the speed of this Luzinger team. As you watch uh, the running back there, what's his uh, 25, I believe? Mitchell. Mitchell, right. As he shakes off one tackler there and really turned that corner very well. So big pickup to give them another first down or their first first down of the game. That's right. Pitch goes to Mitchell, and Mitchell Ooh. gets buried at the 30-yard line. Look out, John Raffel. Uh, hello, sophomore. Welcome to <laughs> high school football. That's right. Get a taste of this turf. Yikes. Well, I'm sure that's got to be one of the hardest hits this young man has faced. Uh, and you see him here trying to get around that left end and meets Mr. Raffel right there. Nice tackle. That's textbook. That's what the coaches like to see and teach. There you see Tolliver. Getting everybody going, he's gonna pass, looking to the right side, it's caught at the 40 yard line and splattered down hard on the play. Boy, this legacy team can hit. It's John Reffel again. And it looks like he's gonna be a little slow getting up. That's number eight. Dijon Washington. So Washington with his first catch and uh, he might be telling uh, Tolliver to give him a break on this next one. Don't throw it back here too fast. You see, he had plenty of time to set up, plant his feet, and make a good throw, a little high, but he brought it down and then tried to make a little bit out of it, and that's when he got uh, rolled over. And Washington right now is a um, little bit wobbly coming off as he's going to be replaced by Samaj Harris. I think he may have just kind of got the wind knocked out of him as he rolled over on that tackle. You know how often you can get that ball caught under you, and it doesn't take much for it to knock the wind right out of you. That's the new offensive coordinator, Coach Henderson, for Losinger. So third and eight after the seven-yard gain. Tolliver, look out from behind, throws it on the run, just over the head of Kemp, and it'll be fourth down. I think the pressure got to Tolliver then, uh, and we talked about it earlier as to whether this Losinger quarterback was going to be able to settle down, get his confidence early, and certainly Coach Tolliver's giving him plenty of opportunities by going to the pass early. And 
there you see the ball just a little bit too high for the receiver. So Tolliver now one out of seven for just seven yards. And that will bring on the punter, Jarast. Sardist Jarast. And I understand this is his first year playing uh, football or regulated football, the high school level. And, and here come the lightning. And wow. it's off. It's, it's a shank, they call. He was lucky to get that off as this one just barely gets into lightning territory and gets to the 46-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for the lightning there as they have really struck on the behinds of the Olympians. Well, no doubt the defense now for Luzinger has really got to step up. And when we say step up on the defense at Luzinger, that means number five, Uno Kavinga. Number four. Uh, number four, I'm sorry. That's all right. You, you're allowed. Thank you, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be the only one I'm going to mess up tonight, but hopefully it won't be many. Okay, that's the only free one, though. Oh, okay. The rest <laughs> I have to pay for. That makes sense. It looks like uh, the defense is trying to stack the lines and force them to throw it. And oh, look out as the running back escapes and gets deep into losing your territory. And now we have a penalty. And that could be something big as running all the way down was Jake Levin all the way to the 38 yard line. But let's see what the penalty is. Looks like the defense wants motion, but uh, it's going to be a face mask. So after a 24-yard gain by Levin, they're going to tack on another about 10. another 10 to the 22. There you see the run. Just a nice hole. Everybody got pushed to the right. Outstanding blocking by that offensive line to open up that hole. And I mean, it was, what, eight yards before anybody touched him. Well, Luzinger defense backs up against the wall in the red zone. So in trouble is Bublitz, and Bublitz is going to take it himself and a good open field tackle after about an eight-yard gain is Bublitz as he was tackled by Joshua Brown. And it looks like he'll be about a yard short of the first down, but no doubt this uh, legacy team has come prepared, and they're pulling out all stops. Bublitz on a rollout here decides to keep it, and as you see him turn up field, nice uh, cut back inside to pick up some extra yards, and right near the first down before he stopped. So it'll be second and one from the 13 yard line. As Legacy is just going about business. Second and one for Legacy. Legacy last year was seven and three overall, five and one in second place in their 5A. Oh, a tackle from behind the line and it's gonna be a two yard loss as Gallegos got hit from behind. Kavenga was in there. Also in there was uh, Filippo Maola. And it looked like I saw number 55 up also in there, Luau. Here it comes. He was the one initially slowed him up, but then the pursuit caught up, made the stop before he got a head full of steam. And tell you, this Luzinger defense has got to be wondering what's going on. They didn't anticipate this, but uh, Cal Sports said something uh, along the lines that this might be the case. Yeah, they predicted a 20-point win by Legacy. It's 7 to nothing now with 4.50 clock running left to go in the first quarter. And now we have some sort of a motion call. As and this was a judge. big third down, or is, I should say, a big third down inside the 20. And, and that's, that's a delay again. That is a delay. We know that one. <laughs> so that's going to back them up five yards. And uh, let's see if... Uh, Luzinger now will put some real pressure on that backfield to keep them out of uh, at least. Well, we saw the kicker kicking them from about this distance, so he may be able to make this reach if he gets the opportunity. But a big third down coming up, Luke. Third and about eight. Under center, three wide receivers in the patter. Back goes Bublitz, gets the man coming underneath. We have a penalty flag on the field as the receiver that's Travis, Travis Sears, Sears gets about the nine yard line, eight yard line, but let's see what the flag is. As penalty flags now are being the name of the game, Frank Johnson and his crew. And unofficially, I have this as the fifth penalty of the game, two for uh, Legacy and three for Luzinger. 
big discussion down there. This is a big call because the ball is inside the 10-yard line now, and it would give a first and goal for the Lightning. Here he comes. Let's see what he's uh, what they figured out. Interference on the offense. foul on the offense. So that's going to bring it back. That's a way big back. One. Yeah, that's a big one. The line of scrimmage was the 20 yard line after the penalty. And this one's going to come back to about the 35. So legacy now starting to shoot themselves in the <laughs> foot after a nice uh, pickup off of a couple of plays to put them in the red zone. Now they find themselves right at the 35. And man, we're talking about what? Fourth and about 25. As a personal foul, don't know what it was, but uh, boy, that. Now we have a timeout on the field, and I would imagine, no, uh, it's, it's called by Losinger. And uh, what do you think they're going to call here? What do you, what, okay, Coach, Ricks, what are we going to see here? Well, I think uh, Legacy is probably going to try to do what we call a corner kick and try to get losing a trap deep into their own territory. They really haven't been able to show any offensive power yet. And I think uh, one of the things that uh, Coach Vuris talked to us about is making sure that his offense kind of dictated what the defense on Luzinger did, and as well as keeping that offense of Luzinger off of the field. He realizes that they probably have more size, more speed, and this is the perfect opportunity with field position to keep their backs back against the wall. Right now, uh, the Lightning are out quicking him. It's fourth down and 22 yards to go. The first down marker, uh, they have to get to the 12-yard line. They're at the Luzinger 35-yard line right now. And that just really frosts a coach when you get two penalties like that, giving up 20 yards and two penalties. I have no doubt this will be a conversation on that long plane ride back to uh, the Denver, Colorado area. Let's see if the kicker can put it inside the 10 and trap Luzinger back in their own uh, deep or their own end of the field. Kip Smith is the kicker. Nobody back for Luzinger. Only punted once last week, and it is a nice coffin corner kick as it hits at the inside the five, but it'll be a touchback for Losinger. So they catch a break there, a big break. This game could have been 14 to nothing real easy, Reynard. And no doubt the history of Losinger says, should that occur, it's going to be a long night. That's true. Seven to nothing is our score. 428 left to go in the first quarter. Glad you joined us here on Channel 22 Sports along with the Channel 22 Sports crew. Reynard Ricks is joining us tonight. A, a rare pleasure. Well, oh. thanks for uh, stepping in. My pleasure, Lou. Well, Coach Tolliver's coming out with four wide receivers split wide. He said he wanted to spread out that defensive uh, legacy. Ball is handed off to Mitchell. Mitchell is jitterbugging his way up to about a four-yard gain, and that's what we're going to see from Tramel Mitchell. And you know what? He looks a little bit like Mark Rogers. Maybe not that burst of speed, that first to fifth gear speed, mm -hmm. and that power, that punch, but he's still a sophomore. Well, as you see him, he's, he's looking for somebody to run past and not somebody to run into. He's uh, a little guy, as you mentioned, a jitterbug type of runner. And no doubt uh, after that last hit he took in that last series, he's, uh, he's looking for the men to hit him. And now what a pursuit on the other side of the ball by Nick Casa as he just went over somebody and buried Mitchell for about a one-yard loss, or did he get back to the line of scrimmage? I think you'll see here loss. in the replay, he might have been, no, that looks like he might have lost a yard, but they look like they may have given him one. But no yeah, doubt, uh, Coach generous. Tolliver's got to be scratching his head right now. Well, they definitely have to pass on third down and seven, a big first down. Look out, here comes the blitz, and it's caught on a play, on a design play by Kip. The ball is down. Who has it? Does Legacy have it? Yes, they do. As Justin Kemp caught the ball, had the first down, gave it up, and Legacy gets the first turnover of the game. I am just shocked. I, I, I thought definitely that Lou Zinger would come out and play better here early in this game, and uh, they've got to be disappointing to the Coach Tolliver to see how they're making mental errors. As the ball got loose. He left it back there on the carpet early as you see the replay again. Right there is where he gets stripped. It's laying down, and that was a good fumble. That's if right. If there's such a thing as a good fumble. 
as Ryan Paulson was the man who forced the fumble. Didn't get a chance to see who. Timeout. The timeout by Legacy, I do believe. Yes. At the 28 yard line. Tom Strickfadden, can we see that replay one more time, please? Just wanted to see, uh, give credit to the Lightning player who recovered the fumble. Well, I have been impressed with this legacy team. I think more so on defense than I have been on offense because clearly, as we talked about in our pregame, the defense was going to be outweighed, outmatched, outspeeded, and everything. And yet they're coming out here and really putting some hat on these guys from Luzinger. Nice strip. And number 72, boy, just trying to find out who was it. 72 looked like he had his bar hands on the ball. 72 Sean is the one that Jenkins. recovered it, I believe. Okay. So, so we'll give it to Sean Jenkins. So we've got the first turnover, and unfortunately, Legacy is the recipient. And uh, now they're bat they have the ball deep inside of Olympian territory at the 28-yard line, first and 10. And out of the shotgun and offside is going to be the call. And that's the reason that Nicholson Ta Taufa had a good jump on that tackle. So that was that'll Jake, be I'm sorry, Lou, that was Jake, Jake Levin, with Levin with the run before the, or during the penalty. Let's see who this is going to go against. You know, this is the third offensive series for Legacy, and two of the three have started in Luzinger territory, and they've gone deep into the territory, and there's the call from the umpire or the refs. Yeah, we saw, I saw Nicholson Taufa. There he is right there. Tried to get back on side, but uh, that's how he got in on Levin real quick as uh, Una Cavienga wrapped him up as well. So it'll be first and five. Two receivers split wide. And a nice hit up the middle there with Gallegos. There's Gallegos following his blockers like a good running back should with 2.56 left to go, clock running. And Lou, this is what, uh, you know, Legacy has been doing most of the game except for that last series. They've all had short third downs to make. And here we are looking at another short third down. Second and I don't know what coach that doesn't make happy. That's right. Second and two, or a long two, almost three. And now we've got, what, another penalty flag? Don't see any flags, do you? Looks like the refs just weren't ready. Let's see what the man in the white hat saying. Offside. Offside losing her, so it's a first down. So second penalty in a row, second offside. And their fifth of the early game. We're only still in the first quarter. And that's their fifth penalty, and I would say at least three of them have hurt them really bad. Well, this is going to get down to the 15-yard line. And there you see on the replay, defense jumping off a little early. And let's hope that this uh, losing your team can get back into it here. They're only down seven to nothing, but they're in deep trouble right now in the first quarter. And now rolling out to the left again and catching it wide open on the sideline. And uh, did he get into the end zone? I no. think he's going to be a little short. Looks like they're going to mark him out at the one yard line, but a great fake by Bubblitz. And I tell you, the way he faked into the line, and because they've had so much success with Gallegos with those quick hits, he's able now to fake that into the running back, take it around and buy some time. Easy toss right over to his outside receivers. You see him here. Look at this fake into him. Right there, everybody beautiful. bought it on Luzinger. Even our camera operator got lost. And there he is making the toss right over the top of number four, Coenga. And Levin gets down inside the five to the one. First hand off, first and goal, and into the end zone for Gallegos. Touchdown legacy. It's 13 to nothing with 150 left to go in the first quarter. Well, I tell you, this team from uh, has no jet lag coming in here last night from uh, the Denver, Colorado area. And no doubts, uh, as the coaches 
reminded them on the trip this was business and not pleasure. They'll get to do some pleasure in the next couple of days. That's right. As now Kip Smith tacks on the extra points, and it's 14 to nothing in favor of Legacy. But, uh, well, if, if you had to say something, it's the, um, the losing or penalties that have really cost them. No doubt, uh, Lou, I tell you, as I mentioned, five penalties already, and we still got a minute 50 left in the first period. And I'm sure a couple of these guys on the Lou Zinger side have got to be wondering what has happened. This was supposed to be a home game for them, supposed to be, in essence, a warm-up game for Bay League starting in a few weeks, and yet they're playing like uh, they're still looking for an identity. That's right, and uh, in a way they are because they're coming out of that run mentality. Last year, uh, Coach Tolliver was telling us before the game, last year they were trying to find that, mm -hmm. and it was tough. But uh, this year there's still a lot of guys left over from the Mike Witt era, and uh, here we are. And again, good coach teams just seem to wreak havoc on this Losinger team. So let's see if they can shake out of it now, down 14 points, just the opposite of what happened to them last week at Lawndale. Well, they could really use a big return here from Mitchell. And if he can get some momentum going for him, perhaps it'll settle down Tolliver a little bit, and maybe he can get something going. Smith kicks it high and deep as Kemp fumbles it at the one, picks it up. Here he comes, has some room, gets away from a man. What a move at the 21-yard line, all the way up to the 25-yard line. Justin Kemp with a nice return after dropping the ball 24 yards on the return. Nice uh, run there by Kip. No doubt uh, the young man really wanted to make up for one of the errors he had committed earlier. And, uh, he's got his team out at the 25, and now we'll find out if Tolliver can set, settle this team down and make a couple of first downs and get them on the move. Nice yeah. move right there as you see him elude the tackler. Just had to wrap him up or else he would have been gone for another 10 yards easily. And he only had a couple of more guys, well, one guy to beat. Here's Mitchell. Mitchell to almost the 30-yard line. He gets pounded down. I tell you, that's one thing that's impressed me. Even though they're not big on the scale, they're big on the hits. And Casa has had a couple of big hits. That was his second one there as he introduced himself, or I should say reintroduced himself to Mr. Mitchell. And as you see him here sprinting out to the left side, here comes Casa. Bam! Right there. Youch. And they know it, too. They're having a terrific game. So it's second down and 10 from the 30-yard line. I'm going to be curious to see how many more of these kind of shots Mitchell can take. I know he's a little guy, and Coach says he's a tough one. We'll find out. There he is stopped in the backfield by number 52, and that was Ryan Paulson. So let's see. It's a two-yard loss back to the 28-yard line. I'm just uh, amazed at the penetration that this legacy defense is getting. As you see right there, when he handed it off to Mitchell, he was had a guy right there hanging on him. A net six yards for Mitchell on seven carries. No doubt, Coach Tolliver's got to talk to this offensive line. They have got to give Paul, uh, got to give uh, Tolliver more protection. And they're looking for a blitz now. Is Tolliver? Trying to change up the play, maybe. Here it As comes. Back to pass. There comes the blitz from the corners out to Mitchell on the screen and maybe gets back to the 30-yard line as there were two linebackers in on top of Tolliver. Yeah, I think uh, Luau overran his blocker and the man that he was intended to block got right by him, as you see right here. Watch number 55, who's his lead block. He's just off the screen there. He turns back in, he ran right by him. There he goes, number 46, made the tackle. And that and was John Raphael. The first quarter comes to an end. And when we come back from break, we'll bring you the second quarter of Legacy and Losinger. They're up 14 to nothing, the Lightning are, on Channel 22 Sports. And we are still here at Labard Stadium in Costa Mesa where the score is 14 to nothing. 
And uh, what do the Olympians have to do to get this thing going? I think they need a couple of first downs to get them, give them some confidence. It looks like what you had told me earlier about this Luzinger team in years past, I would venture to say that they're a little down on themselves right now. And Coach Tolliver is going to have his work cut out at halftime and trying to keep this lead from uh, getting any worse. The punt is made by Gerast, and that gets to the 32-yard line, so at least that pins Legacy back into their own territory this time, Reynard. One of the few times that they've had to start any offensive series in their own territory, and this isn't bad field position. When you think about the 33, what are they going to, looks like going to set it down to the 32-yard line. Not bad uh, field position for any offense, and no doubt the way Legacy has been playing, they'll uh, see if they can't keep a get a couple of first downs here to keep that defense on the field. And that's something Lou Zinger needs to do is get off of the field on defense. So a 32 yard punt for Gerast hey. as there you go. There's a defensive play, but now we have some penalty flags all over the place as that was Jake Levin with the run. And look like Sam Williams in there to make the stop in the backfield. And Coach Tolliver is going to need a few more of those if, uh, oh, we've got a penalty though that looks like it may negate that loss. Let's wait for Frank Johnson to make the call. A hold against Legacy. So that would negate the run. And uh, you betcha they're going to take that penalty. So it happened at the 30-yard line. Let's see where it is. Now I would venture to say that was old number 55 in the white jacket. Zach Newman, the center. Mm -hmm. And there you see a good pursuit up the middle. And that's what Losinger does best. Just run right through the blockers, and that really pins the Lightning back in their own territory, all the way back to their own 17-yard line. Well, I think this is a big play here for Coach Tolliver and his Losinger Olympians. As first down in about 25, and it's very important that they keep long yardage for them to obtain the first down, but Bubble is dropping back. As the swing pass is complete to Levin, another penalty flag and out of bounds at the 26 yard line. But let's see what this one is. Well, both coaches have got to be scratching their heads wondering why their guys are committing so many penalties here. We realize this is only the second game of the early season, but I'm sure this is something they'll be working on in practice next week. And it looks like they're gonna bring the ball back again. Another hold. Wow. So this one will be half the distance. That's going to make it about fourth and San Diego. <laughs> or I should say second in San Diego. So there you see getting in on the ball for losing it was big Otis Jones who's going to be making a recruiting trip to Iowa State. Well, I'm sure he'll uh, enjoy himself. That's a beautiful campus. I've had the opportunity to go there and uh, good luck to him. Hopefully uh, he's what the team is uh, needing and looking for. The Cyclones, boy, what a great atmosphere in the Big 12. And I'm sure he's gonna love every minute of it. So we'll see if Kip Smith is gonna punt out. No, Actually, it's, it's first, first down, yeah, check that. Yeah, first it's down. first down and a whole lot, about 30 yards to go for the Lightning. Let's see if Losinger can get something going here. And they blitzed in uh, Lou and looks like they caught him standing them up there. Maybe a pickup of one or two yards before they get him down on the ground. But certainly uh, I kind of thought uh, Coach Voorhees might come out with some throwing to try to get some of this uh, real estate back that they've lost on these penalties. And uh, I guess he thought maybe he'd catch them off guard if he uh, ran a quick trap over the right side there. Because um, Gallegos on the play. If you're going to give it, you have to give it to your best running back here. Just hand it off and hopefully he can get his nose dirty in those blue jerseys. Well, this is where your offensive line has got to step up and make some holes for him so he can get through there to try to pick up some of this real estate. And what is this, second and about 30 still? Second 20. 27. Man back in the shotgun formation with Bublitz, a definite passing formation. Slings it out, man wide open, caught at the 31 yard line. And that was caught by Bo Trigstead. And that is up to about the 37 yard line. Oh, Deshaun Mills got turned around on that pass play. And as you see here in the replay, a low snap to Bublitz, but he got it 
was able to get control of it, threw it out over the outreached arms of the defender, and there he is, sitting wide open by himself, number 80, in an excellent spot, I should say. That was Trigstead. They run their routes very well. We were noticing that in warm-ups. A big 24-yard pass play. And that's and what you call a well-coached team. And this is a third and five now for the Lightning. So let's see what the Olympians can do now as they show blitz. Here they come. Sack. Nicholas Taufa with the big sack. And that was a huge sack, Coach. Let me tell you, had they got that first down, I think the Olympians would have really hung their head. And I don't know if they'd have been able to get back here in this first half. But as you see the penetration there, and I tell you, Tuafa really right there to wrangle him down to the ground. And I think that might be just what the Olympians need to get some momentum here and turn this game around. Losinger had to call a timeout. You think that maybe a Legacy could go for it here? They're up 14 to nothing, 9-15. What's the thinking? You think maybe that they'll do a little trick play and throw it on the run, give it to the, the uh, up man? Well, the coaches told us they had a few tricks up their sleeve. I don't know if I would show it right here, but certainly this would be a perfect opportunity to almost put a nail in the coffin. And no doubt it would take a lot of wind out of the sails, as you see here, the rush by the Luzinger defense. He ran right into two off of and the pressure came from big number 55. Patty Lealua. I'll let you call his name out. <laughs> Good job there, Coach. That's right. We don't want to pronounce that because we don't want his mother mad at us for the oh, first name. Oh, no. Patty Le Lealua. Le All right. I'll go with that. There you see Coach Tolliver. He's got his head down. He's got to be wondering what he can do to shut this offense down from legacy. And Let's see if they've got something up their sleeve here. Looks like uh, Luzinga's going to try to pressure the kick. And Smith, a bad punt. Oh. And it takes a Luzinger bounce. And it's downed at the 43-yard line. They're going to give the spot at the 44. But that pressure was uh, really felt by Kip Smith, and he quick kicked it. I think you're right on top of that one, Lou. No doubt he felt the pressure, saw it coming, tried to get rid of it, and just shanked it a little bit. And believe it or not, the Olympians now have the best field position they've had the entire game. Now let's see what they can do with it. It's first and 10. We'll call it the 44-yard line. And they should, the momentum should be switching around. Let's see if the offense feels it. Tolliver, Four men. Tolliver needs a big play here. He's got a man over the middle. Turn around. He's got it. He gets away. In for the touchdown. It's Wasaki Hilt. Touchdown. Losinger. A 56-yard touchdown strike, but let's see, a flag on the field at the 12-yard line. I think that flag is going to go against the defense. It may have been a face guard. I'm certainly hoping it wasn't a clip because we did see a couple of uh, wide receivers down there to kind of escort him in. Mm. You know what? When uh, Tolliver threw that ball in a line, I didn't think anybody was going to turn around for it. But let's see what this is. Personal foul, mm. but it's a touchdown. Celebration, maybe? Must have been. All right. So a 56-yard touchdown pass by Tolliver to Rosaki Hiltz, and that is the third time that these two. There you go. Here's the replay. Look at that. Just and a the defense ran into each other. Little skinny post. Mm-hmm. Just like you used to run. Oh. Yeah, I used to throw them like that. <laughs> <laughs> but a nice play by Tolliver, and I think he needed that more than Lou Zinger did. He needs to get his confidence in that pocket, see if he can get this turned around. And now they're going to try a long extra point. Anybody can do it. It's this young man, Zardest Gerast. Let's see if he can do it. This is going to be a 35-yard PAT attempt. It looks bad. The ball, the, it was a bad snap from uh, Ona Kavianga, and Tashawn Burton tried to handle it, but the timing was all funky. And you saw Jarras trying to stutter step on his way up to approach the ball, and that's what threw off his timing. And no doubt that had a big impact on the kick. And uh, I don't know, this 14-6 to lead, how good it is, but uh, 
Lou Zinger may have to come back with a two-point conversion later on, as you see Duras shank it off to the left there just a little bit. But uh, the confidence in the second quarter, it was a different Lou Zinger team on, on the defensive side. And then you saw the offense, boom, one, huge, one play. A huge Ten switch. seconds. And I think more importantly, it was that defensive stop that we alluded to that gave them the offensive momentum. And let's see if they can carry it over now and if the defense can get up here and shut this legacy offense down again. That's Gallegos on the far side and Ashton That's Renshaw on the near side to receive the kick for legacy as Gerast will tee it up. I guess they kick it from the 40. We were trying to figure that out. We Is thought it? it was the 35. Yeah. Was that okay. a new change in high school rules this year? I, I don't know. 35. But nevertheless, he's got five yards closer to kick it. And uh, being a junior in his first year kicking, uh, he's got to have a few butterflies out there. Absolutely. Again, on this new surface, as this one bounces to Gallegos. the goal line, Gallegos is just going to let that one go because that was flopping around like a fish on a hot pier. I think he was very wise to let that go into the end zone. Had he tried to pick that up with all those uh, rolls and bobbles that were going on as it was approaching him, that could have certainly been another big boost for that Luzinger defense had they been able to get him and trap him down there deep in their own territory. Now uh, the kicker, Gerast, is getting a talking to by Coach Tolliver right now, who was the defensive coordinator for a season with Mike Witt before taking over the reins last year. So it'll be first and 10 for the Lightning and Bublitz under center this time out of the eye. And he'll pitch it back to Gallego. Stutters, gets uh, past the 20 yard line and following somebody up to about the 24, we'll call it the 25. So a five yard gain for Gallegos and the Lightning. Nice strong run by Gallegos as he was following his big tackle number 74, Josh Greaves up the middle there. And uh, no doubt looking for some running space. As you see the pitch here coming to Gallegos, makes a sidestep right up in there. And as you see, nice hole there. Not able to get through it before the defense grabs a hold to him and puts him down. Now this is a huge possession or defensive stand for Losinger to see if they can keep that momentum. Rolling out to the right again. And that play that they love to run. And it's a first down for the Lightning as the pass was completed to Travis Sears. And we talked to Coach Tolliver about his guys staying home on those fakes. And you saw right there the prime example of where the defense bit on the first play, or the first fake, I should say. And Bubbles just calmly rolled out to his left, found his big tight end, dropped it over the outreach hands of the linebacker, and uh, picked up the first down. There you can see it in the replay. Nice blocking also by Zach Newman. And a good open field tackle on the other side by the Olympians. But not until he had got the first down. You're right. So first and 10. As here comes Gallegos to the 40 yard line, bounces off of a tackle as Samaji Harris did not wrap him up, just hit him. But Gallegos is too good of a runner to go down on a, on a hit and not a wrap up. And that's one of the things the Luzinger Olympians have got to do. Watch here what's happening. It looks like they're almost letting them overrun. They're letting the defense run in, run past it, and they're just opening up the lanes and letting the offensive, or I should say the running back, run right through there. And uh, Coach Tolliver's got to tell his guys they've got to stay home. Second down and two from the 41-yard line. Gallegos again, a nice big hole for a first down. All the way to the 47-yard line they're going to mark it. And the defensive tackle, number 57, Sam Williams, was in there on the stop or got a piece of that. Was able to slow up Gallegos, and, but not again until he got the first down, Coach. Well, Gallegos doesn't get a lot of yards per carry. Is that another flag I see on the field? Yep, uh, a face mask laundry. is the preliminary. Now it's official. So this one is going to go beyond the 50-yard line and into losing your territory. An in an unintentional face mask. Let's see where it is. Right there. Looked like a little more than unintentional. Isaac Foster hung on. Well, I tell you, the penalties are mounting up, and that's certainly going to make this a much longer game as the penalties are just coming in in bunches. I've got both teams with seven penalties here still in the second quarter. 
stacked on the line there, and Lubitz is going to be sacked. Big sack for the defensive line by Losinger all the way back to the 43-yard line of Legacy. And that was number 12, Rosaki Hill in there for the tackle, the 5'11", 200-pound senior. And no doubt one of the leaders on this defense, he's got to be one of the people along with uh, Kavinga to try to shut this offensive down. So sacked by Hill for a 10-yard loss. Back to the 43-yard line. And that's, that, see, the, their legacy is doing that play, that rollout, that fake and rollout, until Losinger says, oh, that's what it is, and now they're going after there it. There you go. They finally figured it out, looks like, on that last one. Now we have another penalty. And it looks like we're having a penalty just about after every other play. Let's see what referee Frank Johnson calls now. Hold on, offside on Losinger. Now that's that's what really ticks a coach off. Now they were going to be looking at second and eight. Now they're looking at second and four, or I should say second and nine. Now it's second and four. Well, actually, it's uh, second and about oh, I'm thirteen. Sorry. I'm looking at the wrong marker. You're right. I thought they were back further than that. <laughs> but they're back into losing your territory at the 48-yard line via the penalty. Back to pass on the quick drop is Bublitz uh, and dropping the ball. Just couldn't pick it up was Bryson Romero with the touchdown catch already tonight. And again, I think that was pressure that was coming from inside one of the linebackers. Let's see who that is that's coming into pressure. Uh, couldn't see it on that one of the defenders. I think it was Kavanga. Usually is. <laughs> yeah. As uh, Bub uh, Bublitz is four out of six with a touchdown tonight. Big third down coming up here, Coach. Third down and 14 yards to go. Let's see what the Olympians can do. Two-step drop, a timing pattern. Look out, he's behind and he's caught. And it's a first down. A big catch for Travis Sears and a big first down for the Legacy Lightning. A beautiful thrown ball and a beautiful catch. I tell you, that this offense for uh, Legacy is a pretty well-oiled machine. As you see there, Bublitz with the high toss right up over the defender. He never got into the play. Number 21 for Luzinger never saw it. Joshua Brown couldn't do anything but turn around and make the tackle. Big 20-yard gain on that timing pattern on the go. Man comes in motion in the eye. It's pitched back to Gallegos, and Gallegos meets Auna Cavienga, who gets, he's lucky he didn't get a uh, compound fracture out of that one. And once he ran into him, you saw his forward momentum stopped at that point. And his body collapsed. <laughs> well, no doubt, Kavinga is going to have to make a few more of those kind of tackles to try to get this offense back on the field. Now watch this. 5'4", 150-pound Vince Gallegos. Stood him up. Meet, meet Una Cavienga, 6'1", 225. But still a four-yard gain. And no doubt that's one of the reasons why UCLA is looking at that young man. Absolutely. Changing a darker shade of blue for a lighter shade of blue. Pitch back to Gallegos. Nice blocking on the left side, but what a nice pursuit on the play by Filippo Mualoa. And Mo Alawa, he was right there in the backfield, fortunately for him. He was able to at least get his hands on him to drag him down and wait for his help to come. Because I thought had he got by him, oh, nice block there in front of Gallegos. There he comes in the backside and just holding on for some help. Give me some help here. <laughs> okay, I'll do it myself. There you go. Thank now, God. actually, that's a, a, when you tackle from behind like that, that's when you, when a, you penalty. Have a bulldog. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess they don't call that at high school. Maybe it's just uh, in the pros in college. We saw it last week. Oh, okay. Must have missed one then. I'm not going to tell anybody. We'll take that one. So no game. Fake pitch. And now he's going to roll out. Bublitz is to the other side. And to Sears. And let's see if that's good enough for a first down. It looks like it's going to be at the 16-yard line. And good enough for a first and 10. 
Well, this offense for Legacy is on a roll right now. After having been trapped deep in their own territory back there after a couple of penalties, they've gotten their way right on down the field here now and looking to score inside the red zone at the 16-yard line. So a nine-yard gain for Bublitz to Sears. They're racking up the yardage in the air. And the handoff is to Levin. Levin to the 10-yard line, gets out of a tackle, and then pays for it. Kavenga was in there. And about a five-yard gain. Now, Levin is just a sophomore running back, and one of the things that the coaches talked to us about from Legacy was that, you know, some of the kids having played uh, junior varsity weren't accustomed to the speed of the varsity teams, and that was some of the things that they were certainly want to be uh, wanting to see tonight. And no doubt this uh, sophomore here, he came to play. Nice broken tackle there. Sure did. So a seven-yard gain. Now we'll call it a six-yard gain for Levin. Now this is where they've got to watch for that fake into the middle. Full house backfield goes to Gallegos. Nice hit by Cavienga for no gain. Maybe a loss of one. That's a good hit by Cavienga. Nice stop by that linebacker. You like to see him step up in there. That's got to be pleasing to Coach Tolliver. Here you see on the replay. The running back, Gallegos, meets Cavinga. You're not going over anywhere but backwards, son. That's as far as it goes. The buck stops here. <laughs> well, a big third down coming up, Lou. That's it. 144 left to go and a timeout called by Losinger. And uh, so Coach Tolliver, who's in charge of the defense, coming out there. Derwin Henderson is in charge of the offense coming from L.A. High School, uh, Renard. And uh, he wanted to teach these kids how to throw the ball down the field. And they're doing a pretty good job of it. But tonight, they're a little sleepwalking through the first quarter. And uh, yeah, they got Fine. the touchdown in here in the second quarter. Well, I think that's exactly what happened, Lou. They came out and uh, were either sleepwalking or were just going through the motions thinking that this team from Legacy outside of Denver, Colorado, perhaps was going to have some jet lag. Not the case as they came out, slapped them upside the head right quick, put up 14 points, and if they're not careful, they're going to be uh, 21 here in the moment. This team reminds me, the Legacy Lightning, Reynard, reminds me of Miracosta. Not a big team, but they get it done. Explosive on offense. Right. And not bad, and they hit hard on defense. Well, I tell you, this legacy team has really <laughs> impressed me here thus far in the first half. And <laughs> Coach <laughs> Tolliver there, as you <laughs> see him, he's got to be, uh, he may be smiling on the outside, but no doubt he's dying on the inside because legacy just about here looks like they want to punch it in for another score. Full house backfield for Bublitz and the Lightning going over the top. Oh! And it says it picked off. Yes! Oh, he oh. it. It goes out of bounds. It'll be an incomplete pass, or will it be the ball of uh, Losinger? I want to guess that Joshua Brown had that long enough, but I think the officials, are they going to call it? I yeah, think let's see there. They're giving it, though. They're meeting over there now. I think they're going to say he had possession of it long enough before it was stripped. There First down, Losinger. Big play. Big play. Oh, Losinger needed that turnaround. Let's see if they can again capitalize on the turnover. So at the nine-yard line, even though they're pinned way back in their own territory, you still have to say, whew, they dodged a bullet. And with 135 left on the clock, that was a bullet because had they scored there with this amount of time left on the clock, uh, Coach Tolliver and his Losinger Olympians would have been looking at a huge second half comeback. Well, let's see the stacked backfield now as Mitchell gets it, gets up uh, beyond the 10 yard line to about the now 11. Side, about so he'll give he'll two yards and to Mitchell. Again, Casa in there on the nine. stop. Looks like we've got a Losinger player down. And that is Rosaki Hiltz grabbing his left leg and let's hope that's just a cramp or a knee knock coach Tolliver can ill afford to lose one of his most exciting Rashad players this is the young man that just scored the lone touchdown for losing here was doing it on both sides of the ball last week Reynard as uh, he had rushing six out of 14 for two touchdowns two receptions for 19 yards 
And then on the other side of the ball, two tackles and four assists. That's a day's work. And indeed a player that the Luzinger Olympians can ill afford to lose at this point, trailing 14 to six. And that was a young man who... He looks like uh, he may not return this first half. Let's hope he'll uh, get a little uh, attention during halftime and get back out here on the field. And that's uh, one of the one of the coaches from Legacy helping off there, the one that we were talking to before the game. That's a classy move. Indeed, a classy move. Uh, hopefully, he's uh, maybe a trainer as well and has seen this type of an injury before. Well, let's hope Rasaki is okay as he comes off. And this young man is going to be needed, so they really need to get him fixed up and back Seven out on the field. Losing, and they'll check him out as we have uh, some terrific trainers all throughout the South Bay checking on these young kids as Glenn Tolliver under center with a full house backfield. Hand off to Mitchell again. Mitchell gets up to about the 15-yard uh, line. And... That was number 40 who made the stop for uh, Legacy. And I don't have him on my depth chart here. I was just looking at the same thing earlier. He made a play. We'll have to find out who that number 40 was. A big stop. And I think uh, Coach Tolliver has just decided that he wants to try to run the clock out here and go to halftime trailing only by eight and see if they can't regroup. Now you don't want to throw the ball downfield this deep in your own territory and risk the interception for a touchdown. No, I think that would be ill-advised at this point. Tolliver hasn't shown uh, any inklings of being able to hook up with any of his receivers deep. And uh, no doubt, I think this might be the wisest thing for coaches. You see him looking at the leg there of Rasaki Hill. You see the uh, blue wristband of the legacy trainer. Now, that's uh, the, the wristband that they're wearing via KSA Productions who put this trip together. Now, we were told it's just a trip put together. They say, hey, do you got tri uh, uh, teams around the league? As now the handoff is to Mitchell. Mitchell spins as he's hit at the 16-yard line, hard hitting by the Lightning to bring him down. This young man's getting a lot of work here in the first half. I really didn't uh, realize how much the coach was going to depend on him. Realized that uh, one of his main runners uh, was injured up or injured last week's or injured in last week's game. This is him. This is this, this is, is Tolliver. I is, mean, the Tramel. This is Tramel Mitchell, who has the tweaked tweak ankle. Oh man, he's going to be tweaked up a little bit more if he keeps running like that. So it'll be fourth down. And he looks punting. a little gimpy coming off the field here, as a matter of fact. Now, he looks a little frustrated as well. No doubt, he's uh, not happy with the way things are working out here in the first half. Just a sophomore. And another timeout, 46 seconds left to go. As this is a tough game, a playoff atmosphere here at uh, Orange Coast College with the big stadium, the, the nice turf, uh, some unfamiliar surroundings for Luzinger, and uh, really more to the liking of Legacy. But let's this, this is a big coat, uh, kick, I should say, Lou. Let's see if they're going to bring some pressure and try to block this. Gerast back at his own four-yard line. Low snap, gets it, kicks it high, could feel the pressure. And this one does not get a losing or now gets a losing or bounce to the 41-yard line. And Kavanga just laid out number eight. That's Aston Renshaw, who was running back to try to block. And Kavanga met him at about the 45-yard line and said, you won't be the one making any stops. <laughs> See if it's on the replay here. See, uh, Bam, right there. Whoa, <laughs> Lucy. Ouch. Catch the number of that truck. <laughs> oh, man. Ow, that hurt me. Well, no doubt he'll be uh, a little more observant as he comes down behind some of those kicks now. Well, let's see what they can do with 34 seconds left here, Lou. Are they going to go for it? Hey, why not? You have trips, four wide receivers, and one in the slot. As Bublitz was looking downfield, he goes for the man underneath. It's caught at the 37 yard line. And it'll be a gain of about five, uh, four yards, we'll call it. And I think uh, that was just what they wanted to do. I'm a little surprised that they went inside as opposed to going outside, trying to get outside to stop the clock. And if they're not careful, this may be the last play of the game, rushing up to the line, seven seconds, six, five, can they get it off? 
just barely. Now he's going to go for it. Has two men wide open. Ooh. Oh, Deshaun Mills almost intercepted it. He was the closest man. Just misjudged that just a little bit. Almost got his second interception of the half. And no doubt that would have been a big help, uh, not only to his stats, but it would have gave that Lou Zinger team a little momentum to go into the locker room with. And I don't know if I want to be in there with Coach Tolliver right now. Uh, this has got to be a... Uh, a real interesting halftime conversation. Well, Coach Tolliver isn't waiting for the guys to get into the locker room. He's doing it right there, right out on the field now as uh, Deshaun Mills walks by. And they're just getting a good thrashing right there, right out on the field. Well, no doubt he's, uh, he's got to remind his guys, these guys did not come from Colorado to just enjoy the sights and weather here in Southern California. They came to put some hat on losing and make a name for themselves and I tell you, I have been thoroughly impressed with this legacy team. I think just the operation of their offense, the, the simplicity, but yet they're so efficient with it. that uh, And for this to only be the second game, we saw several timing patterns, and they all clicked just they like all look that. Very good. They, and they brought the whole team with them, so that means a lot of JVers, I'm sure, here as well. So this system probably goes back into middle school all the way up into the Lightning program. Well, we're going to step aside for halftime activities. We'll come back with the scoring uh, overview and also some very unofficial stats when we come back. We're glad you joined us on Channel 22 Sports Game of the Week, where the score is the Lightning 14, the Olympian 6. Halftime is just about over. The lightning of Legacy High School in Broomfield, Illinois, which, or Illinois, in uh, Colorado, is uh, just north of Denver, a suburb of Denver, a growing area. And uh, Rasaki Hilt comes running back onto the field, and that's good news to see as he got kicked in the shin. That's what he told uh, Reynard Hicks, or Reynard Ricks, excuse me, taking over for Rufus Washington tonight. And uh, Renard Ricks. And also, well, we're just kind of doing this uh, he and me tonight. Glad that you joined us on Channel 22 Sports. Let's go over the scoring in the first half. It's 14 to 6, do you see? As uh, it was Luke Bublitz with a 65 yard pass to Bryson Romero at 8.42 in a five play, 78 yard drive that took two minutes and nine seconds to make the score seven to nothing. Then it was lightning 14 to nothing on Vince Gallegos one yard run to cap a three play 28 yard drive with a minute 32, uh, that took a minute 32. Then it was the Olympians in the second quarter, dodged a big bullet and came back to score on a 56 yard strike from Glenn Tolliver to Rosaki Hilt. One play took 10 seconds. And we're gonna have the uh, second half flip as the, uh, the captains go out on the field. Let's go out and uh, take uh, care of the stats. The rushing stats, Gallegos for Legacy. And let's see uh, what's going on here. It's the Olympians will be kicking off to the Lightning, and they will be going left to right across your dial. Rushing stats for the Lightning, Gallegos 12 carries for 41 yards and a touchdown. Levin, two carries for 30 yards. And Bublitz, one carry for nine yards. Passing, Luke Bublitz, six out of nine for 140 yards. And a touchdown also was picked off by Joshua Brown. Receiving, Sears, three for 37. Trigstad, one for 24 yards. Romero, one for 65 yards and a touchdown. Levin, one for 11 yards. There were also two sacks by Losinger's defense on Bublitz. For Losinger in the passing department, Glenn Tolliver, four out of eight for 79 yards and a touchdown. Receptions, receiving, Kemp, one for 11. Washington, one for seven. Hiltz, one for 56 and a touchdown. McLaurin, one for five yards. And in the rushing department, Mitchell was the only rusher for Losinger. 
10 carries and only 18 yards. Out of those carries, he had one, two, three, four for a loss. So the hard hitting defense of Legacy really put a frustration mark on Tramel Mitchell. And also penalties played a big part. I believe uh, Renard was saying there was uh, seven penalties for Losinger and six for Legacy. And they played a big part in this second quarter, also towards the end of the first quarter. And it'll be interesting to see when uh, Renard gets back up here, he's gonna be talking to the coaches down on the field, Wayne Voorhees for Legacy and Dion Tolliver for Le uh, Losinger. And it'll be interesting to see what their thoughts were at halftime. And we're just about ready to get underway. Zardes Gerast about ready to kick things off from his own 40 yard line. Gallegos and Sears will be receiving. Gallegos picks it up at his own 10 yard line. Up to the 20, he gets met at the 25 yard line and falls forward to about the 27 yard line. Nicholson Taufa with the tackle. Also, Reynard Westbrook in on special teams. And so Ray Ray in on the tackle as well. So the third quarter is underway, and there you see it. And Renard Ricks is back up in the booth. And uh, do you have your breath back yet? That's a long way up here. Let me tell you, <laughs> got my exercise in for the day, maybe for the weekend. As Gallegos gets the handoff and is met in a different attitude on defense by the Olympians. A loss of about a yard. And that is something that the Olympians must do here early in this third period. Had a quick chance to talk to both coaches. For Coach Tolliver and the Olympians, he said he stressed they got to cut down on the penalties and they must get more efficient in their operation on offense. On the other hand, Coach Vuris, he says these guys are doing exactly what they want to do. Only problem, penalties. Diego's drops the ball, picks it back up, still has trouble getting a fork in it. Has just couldn't get that pitch and Losinger, boy, they were just that close to picking up a turnover. And that could have been huge for Losinger right now. And certainly something they do need to get this momentum back on their side of the field. Coach Tolliver says he talked to him at halftime about execution and cutting down on the penalties. He said that this team from uh, the Colorado Denver area is not doing anything that they didn't expect and that they didn't see on film. It's just that the Olympians just aren't executing. Third down and 13 for Legacy and the Olympians are alive on defense in the third quarter, Renard. Ooh. Another hit from behind the line. The defensive line of Losinger is wide awake now. And that was number nine, Moala. What a shot he put on that running back as he came around the backside. And you see him right here circling in on him, grabbing him, bam! That's the way you stop a running back in the backfield. So Kip Smith will be kicking to Deshaun Mills, who is back at his fourth, uh, 40, well, still going back. Slow down there, Deshaun. Going back, creeping back towards his 35 yard line. Smith back at his own 13 yard line. Block. Look out, almost as blocked as that one affected the kick as it takes a losing or bounce and it's gonna be great field position to open up the second half for the Olympians. And every time the punter has had the opportunity to punt, they've let it hit the ground and it's gone in the losing or direction each time. So let's see if the Olympians and Coach Tolliver can get this offense on track and they can get back in this game. Just eight points down, that's one touchdown and a two point conversion and they need something right now on offense to get the momentum. So just a 19 yard punt. Well, they give him a yard back. Well, uh, yeah, 19 yards out of the 45 yard line. So let's see if the offense can pick it up now, Renard. As making that uh, the interference on there was on uh, Kip Smith as now Tolliver kept the ball on a keeper and got forward progress to about the 43, but I only think they're gonna give him a yard. And right there to make the stop was Enrique Guerrero, one of the um, inside linebackers. 
Now they barely give Tolliver a yard on that one. They're going to call it, jeez, I'm going to call it a no gain. And that's the first time we've seen Tolliver fake that handoff to Mitchell and keep it for himself, but didn't fool Legacy. They were right there waiting on him. That's right. We have trips to the near side. One wide receiver to the right. One lone man in the backfield with Tolliver, who stays back to block. It is caught by Kemp at the 40, 38 yard line and almost to the first down marker, just a yard short. So it'll be third and one from the 36 yard line. And they needed that play, and even more so, they need this big third down to keep the ball and keep the momentum on their side. As you see, the outstanding blocking by that offensive line, giving Tolliver time to get the ball out to his wide receiver so he can make the run. Patty Lealua with the big block. Full house backfield. This is what we see from Lusinger. As now, here comes Rasaki Hilt from the kick shin bone and a big first down run all the way inside the 20 yard line. Indeed, Rosaki Hill is back and back they need him. How bad they do need him after that big touchdown run in the first half. He's back now after that injury. As we mentioned, just a little kick to his shin kind of threw him off his game and you see him running there quite well, picking up the first down. Now they're gonna run him again as Hilt gets it again and bangs his way inside the 20 yard line to the 17. So maybe they're gonna try to soften up the, loser, the legacy defensive line. Yeah, and looks like they're trying to run Rosaki Hill as opposed to Mitchell. Now Mitchell's coming back out on the field after those last two runs by Rosaki. So let's, let's see how this is gonna uh, change the offense, if any. Second down and seven from the 17 yard line. Full house backfield, Rosaki Hill is the bigger man to try to pound it in, but Mitchell is gonna get his chance with the ball. Sidesteps a man and gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. I like the way Mitchell runs, but I think he's running a little timid now. Doesn't look like the same man we saw in the early parts of the first half. Don't know if he's lost his confidence here or not, but as you see the handoff here, look like he, he's looking around, waiting on a hit that didn't come. So a big third down play, no gain. So here's the unofficial stat on um, on Mitchell, 10 carries for only 18 yards. That won't get it done. Here's a nice fake into the line. Got a man wide open, he got him. Inside the five, touchdown, Losinger, Nicholson Taufa. Any flags? Nope, it's a touchdown. And you know you've gotta look around now because we had so many in the first <laughs> half, you gotta look before you say for sure. That's right, now so big Nick. Let's see if he's gonna go for the two here, or whether he thinks his offense can get another trip. Now here you see the replay, nice throw there by Tolliver. I almost thought he had waited too long to release it, but found his main man out there, Tuofalo. Uh, as, as Glenn Tolliver, watch him step inside the linebacker, step up in the pocket. And they are going for the two. Fumble. Fumble the ball, and it's not gonna matter. So it's 14 to 12. Mm, that's got to be something they'll want to work on next week. But Losinger comes out, takes the ball 45 yards and scores. And I can't tell you, Lou, how big that was for them. I, I really think that was a big play, a big scoring drive. If Losinger has any plans on hanging around with this legacy team, I think there's going to be some more scoring. And both teams are going to have to wake up their defenses and shut somebody down here. Coach Tolliver talking to his, one of his key players there. I believe that's the quarterback, Tolliver. Uh, no, uh, as I understand, uh, no relationship, no kin there. It's just uh, got the same last names. That's right. That's right. Well, Nicholson Taufa, he's got a lot of brothers, I'm sure. His, it was a 17-yard pass play to a little used tight end, so kind of a kind of the sleeper hold. And uh, maybe one of those wrinkles that Coach Tolliver told us about he had planned for this game, no doubt. As you see the kickoff here, that's... Uh, Gallego says the ball, outrunning everybody, going to the far sideline, and a big tackle, and a big hit at the 30-yard line as he's corralled down by Joshua Brown. Mm -hmm. well, Joshua Brown looked like he was one of the last men that uh, 
Gallegos had to beat and uh, wasn't able to get around him. As you see here on the replay, he's got a blocker in front of him, but the blocker missed the block and let 21 run right behind him and make the tackle. Nice open field tackle by Josh. That's something that I'm sure the uh, special teams coach is going to want to talk to uh, those guys about in practice next week. So from the 30-yard line, as uh, the receiver at the bottom was wide open until Brown got to him. So now the throw is underneath. Wide open as Sears gets around a man and finally is stopped at the 36-yard line. Nice one-handed catch there by number five, Sears. My goodness. Had plenty of time to gather himself, bring it in with the one-hand left-handed, I believe it was, as you see here, the fake pitch to the running back. And I tell you, Bublovich is just very calm, a little overthrown, but not too overthrown for Sears. Put that left hand out there and snagged it, pulled it right in and got the big, almost the first down. Got a nice move around Mills, that's for sure. So it's second down and short, four yards to go. Bublitz back to pass, has a man wide open and just dropped it out in the flat across oh. the 45 yard line. That's got to be demoralizing. That's the kind of things that stop drives, stops momentum, and that is something that Legacy can ill afford now after Luzinger has come out and smacked him back in the mouth here in the third period. And that was an easy first down as he looked, Bo Trigstead looked like he wanted to just turn and run with it before he had the ball. And that junior is one of his most trusted receivers. He's went to him a number of times, not only in this game, but the game last week. And I think he's starting to really depend on him, but uh, let him down there. Had Netflix. a big 24 yard catch for a first down in the first half. And the shotgun now, Lou. Double tight end sets. Three wide receivers in the pattern to the right side, to the far, to the left side, I should say. And the pass is complete, and it's a first down to the 45-yard line of Legacy. And a big catch for the Lightning. And Deshaun Mills, who was on defense there, just uh, too far off of him on uh, defense. You can't see it there at the top of the screen, but he was just gave him just too much room. As you see, there's the first down marker there. Wow. He wasn't even up on him. You've got to get up on that wide receiver if you're trying to stop the quick hit like that for a first down. It was wide open. All he had to do was catch the ball. So first and 10, as Legacy continues to go with the, packing, uh, with the passing attack. Sears in motion to the near side. Gallegos almost gets caught underneath and does for a loss. Nice. Kavienga. Nice penetration there on Caviengo as he got in the backfield, eluded one tackler or one blocker, and got in there and made the stop on Gallegos. As you'll watch here, watch him step right through here, breaking inside. Nice stop, but number one is the one that made the pressure. He created the pressure, ran him right into Luis, Luis right. Covinga. And uh, Taufa, our Taufa. touchdown man, was the man who messed that one up. Got to have that guy to mess up the runs. And now you see the safety or the cornerbacks looking to see what's gonna happen. And then they go to cover the receivers and that caused a timeout for Legacy. So a good adjustment and the kids listened to the coaching staff. That had to be something that was brought up at halftime and no doubt we saw it work for Luzinger right there. And those are the kind of things that will shake up an offense when they've had their way. And then all of a sudden you show them something new on defense that they hadn't expected. Uh, maybe we need to call time out and think about what we're getting ready to do here. But Lusinger had a good opening drive uh, from their from the 45-yard uh, line of Legacy, a 45-yard drive. Tolliver to Taufa, 17-yard pass play, seven plays in two minutes and seven seconds. That's efficiency. That's yeah. getting it done. Definitely. And they're going to need a little bit more of that because no doubt this Legacy team hasn't stopped playing. They're broken huddle here, and they're ready to go. You see there the quarterback, Bubblitz, tapping the uh, helmet of his, uh, one of his, uh, I think that was the fullback, number 37, or is that 32, I'm sorry, Palmer. Two wide receivers and a double tight end set. Man goes in motion to the far side. Bublitz hands off to Gallegos, has a man in front of him, has first down and more all the way to the 40-yard line of Lusinger. A 15-yard gain for Vince Gallegos. Oh, nice strong run there by Gallegos. I haven't seen him run like that the whole game. Watch him as he gets to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. 
And once he breaks the line of scrimmage, picks up his blockers, and he's just waiting for his block to make some contact. They didn't get number seven. That's Samarji Harris, and Harris is there to make the stop. And big old number 55, Zach Newman, 6'2", 200 pounder, was his lead blocker. That's the longest gain for Gallegos in the game, 15 yards. And it was a good run, too. Back to pass is Bublitz, Looking going deep. deep. And has a man down there. Sears takes it away and blasted. Is it incomplete? Yes, it is. Woo, Sears just close. got blasted as Joshua Brown did have good coverage on it. Joshua Brown, though, I think uh, was kind of put in no man's land there, if you will. He's a little short, only 5'9", 176 pounds. And you'll see Sears just jumps up over him and takes the ball and had it but just couldn't get control of it right there. Good play by Brown, and then also the train known as Samaji Harris came to the tracks. <laughs> just to make sure. That's right. <laughs> that was a Metrolink accident. Oh, I've seen a few of those. They can be ugly. So second down and 10. There's that fake pitch rollout. Look out, here comes Otis, and here comes Auna to tackle him out of bounds after about a two yard gain. I am really impressed with that young man's speed. Not to mention his size, the way he hits, his tackling ability, but his speed. Look at the distance. We can't see it on this replay. Look at, look at Otis. But he's traveling a long ways from that middle linebacker position to pick up the quarterback bubble on the outside. So they give him a four-yard gain up to the 43-yard line. Another big third down, Luke. Absolutely. So Bublitz. Does all that running and gets four yards out of it. And he went to the sidelines to get this play straight from the horse's mouth, I mean the coach's mouth, if you will, uh, Coach Voris. And uh, they're coming out in the shotgun. Looks like they're going to the air. He's stacking up on the defensive in the box on the defensive line, and it goes in and out of the hands of Sears. It'll be fourth and six. That was, I think, just a little too hard of a pass. That's what they call a hot potato. And indeed, he had plenty of time. I don't know what the rush was to get it to him. And uh, had he taken his time, they may have had enough to pick up the first down, but just a little too much mustard on that hot dog. Yeah, they had some Samoan Warriors coming in on him too. Pressure, there it is. Pressure. That's where the, you know, the quarterback coaches uh, have to get you to feel, get that touch. You gotta be able to take your time even though you're under pressure. Smith on a hop. Gets this one and kicks a nice spiral. And no pressure by the defense. They were trying to just lay back and let him kick it. That's right. They know he's a good kicker, and so he uh, kicks it into the end zone. So it'll be first and 10 for Losinger. So just a net 23 yard punt on that one. But more importantly, Losinger gets the ball back. And you see the players there on the sideline. They're pretty pumped up right now. Let's see if that energy can transfer from the sideline to on the field. See if they can put a big drive together here at the end of this third period, try to get a, a score. So from their own 20 yard line, let's see if they can go 80 yards. They went 45 yards last time they had the ball, the first time they had the ball in the second half. And let's see if that momentum can carry. And Hill's in the back, I mean, sorry, Rosaki Hill in the slot. As Tolliver has the ball and he gets tackled for a loss that's for that five yards. That's that Nick Casa. We've been calling his name out all night long and this defensive tackle has been standing up the man in front of him, beating him to the outside. And Tolliver just stood there, looked like he was waiting on him to come tackle him. And he looked like a man with lead boots on. A lot of confusion Casa on standing that standing right play. there waiting on him. And he couldn't outrun him. Just had to eat it instead of throwing it away and maybe costing an interception. Or a penalty for the grounding. So it's second down and 15. Man in motion is Hilt. Look out, the ball's on the ground. And he didn't go down on it. Did Tolliver pick it up no. or did Legacy get it? Legacy. Legacy has the ball, oh my goodness. Now I want you to watch this replay if we've got it. Tolliver is looking at the ball and refused to drop down on it. He's standing there looking waiting on somebody to drop down. He's trying to pick it up. And instead of dropping on it, as they teach quarterbacks, once you've lost it, just get on it. Don't try to do anything with it at this point. So and a huge turnover at 14 to 12 on the 19 yard line. Well, again, 
Luzinger has given Legacy excellent field position, and this is something that they've been able to capitalize on three of the four times or five times that they've been down deep in Luzinger territory. So second fumble of the Knights goes to Legacy. Out of the eye, handoff straight ahead to Gallegos and nothing doing Flag. as Filippo Moala, Moala, Moala. Okay, I'm gonna get these guys right. It takes me about a half a season to get these guys right, but. No problem. And then another understand. Olympian down on the field. There you see the replay as Gallegos comes up in there and looks like uh, May has just gotten rolled over on there on his leg. Again, they're looking at the leg. Against it looks like they're almost working on a cramp, though. That is a cramp. Yep. That's a cramp move. Okay, well, that's, that's good news. Very good news, because that's one of the guys they can ill afford to lose here. But the, the uh, penalty was called on legacy, and it's a holding penalty. Now, you had a more accurate penalty count than I did, Renard. Well, I don't know how accurate it was. I kind of gave up here starting at the end of the first half. I had Legacy with seven and Luzinger with eight. And I think we've had a couple here in the second half already. Both of these teams need to work on uh, keeping these penalties down. And that's clearly one, a couple of the things that both coaches alluded to that they talked about at halftime. Philip Moala comes off and will get worked on. And this is going to go back to the 23-yard line. So Luzinger gets a break, and the penalty uh, going against uh, Legacy pushed them back. That's about a first and 19 or 20, uh, 15, they're saying. Yeah, it's more than that. It's yeah. about uh, 16. We'll call it 17. Yeah. As back to passes, Lubitz, uh, Bublitz, and uh, Sears goes up for the jump ball. And is it caught? Yes, it is. Touchdown, Legacy. Same play that we saw earlier. Sears, how tall is he? I think I saw that he was about 6'3". And the 6'3 versus 5'9". Five, 5'9 nine. Five, nine will lose every time. There you see nice pass, nice touch on it. As Bublitz just lobs it up. And right on top of him, just out jumped him for it. Looked like a basketball yeah. play. Deshaun Mills just couldn't get up and get the rebound. Nope, and I wish we could have shown that earlier, but uh, Sears had his hand on him going down the side of the field. I was a little surprised that the referee or umpire didn't see that and make a call because very close to offensive uh, interference. No doubt uh, something that I'm sure they would have liked to have gotten back, but Mills has got to either jump higher well, he's going to have to stop that guy at the line and uh, put a little more pressure on him getting outside. So a four-play drive. And the kick is good by Smith at 143. Took about a minute 15, a little more than that. Well, Coach Tolliver told me it was penalties that killed him in the first half, and he's got to be thinking they're starting to come back again. And the big fumble big was the key fumble. play. They have got to take care of the ball. That's the second fumble by Luzinger that has cost them in this game. That's right. Turnovers will do it every time. So 21 to 12 is our score. A minute 43 left to go in the third quarter. And our Friday night game of the week on Thursday. And uh, glad you joined us. And hey, there's a Renard Westbrook Siding down at the 50-yard line on the near sideline here. <laughs> as he's on special team. He's our uh, our official mascot. Ah, okay. Well, no kin to Renard Ricks, though. Well, he's akin to Russell Westbrook at uh, UCLA, going to be a sophomore with the basketball team as a good run back now. Here comes Mitchell. Mitchell gets it away he's from another tackle at he's the 40. He, he has one man to beat. Nope. Beat him, but gets cut from behind inside of uh, Legacy territory for a huge return for Losinger. A big run by Mitchell just when I thought perhaps he had lost his confidence. He really ripped off a big run and certainly something that Losinger needs here to get going here at the end of the third period. As you see here, Nice hit up the middle, waiting on his blockers. Ran right into number 51, uh, who was leading the way through there for him. 
breaks to the outside and nice stiff arm to fight off that tackler, kept his balance, went back to the middle of the field. And that's where he was caught up with Sean Jenkins, number 72, who stopped him. And there here comes Zaki. Hilt. And he just tripped over his own shoelaces, it looked like then. That's right. So that's what I thought uh, Mitchell did when he ran into his own man around the 20-yard line. A 60-yard return. Man, that's got to give uh, Mitchell a boost of confidence. He really struggled in the first half. And Hilt is gimpy on Hilt. that bad shin. That's got to be hurting him. He knows how important he is to this team, and I think he's fighting through it right now, but this is when the coaches have to make a decision and say, you might be more detrimental at this point. Come on out for a breather. Let's see if we can get some oxygen in you, and maybe that leg to feel him better. Hilt is a little bit angry that his uh, shin is betraying him, and coming onto the field to replace him is number seven, Samaji Harris. And I can tell you from experience, that is one of the loneliest feelings when you know how important your team needs you and you can't play because you got a bad wheel. Also Nicholson Taufa, who has the ball and trying to get forward, but just can't do it, just gets hammered down by a forearm I thought from he had almost, Ryan Paulson. It looked like he had almost fumbled that ball for a moment, but certainly no gain as he hit up in the middle there. The refs are being kind to him, moving the ball up there to the 38-yard line. It's going to bring yeah. up a big third down. They're going to give him a loss of one on the play, so it's a third and five. Big third and five for Losinger after the big return Let's see if by it was Mitchell. all in vain. And now let's see what's going on here. Timeout Referee field. Johnson says there's a timeout. Actually... There's a timeout because it's the end of the third quarter. That went by quick. That's a good time to call it. <laughs> <laughs> so 21 to 12 is our score. And uh, let's take a quick timeout on Channel 22 Sports. Read. Tolliver back to pass, caught at the 26 yard line. Caught is made by Dijon Washington. Is it good enough for a first down? Yes. That was a huge third down pickup. And I tell you, it's something that the Olympians can ill afford to do now is to not score on each drive. They need to get a drive put together right here to get themselves back into this because they're nine points down. They've got to have two scores. So a huge first down, three receivers to the far side, one to the near side, and that being Washington. Man in motion coming to the near side is Harris. Back to pass, good protection. Man open at the five. Touchdown, Losinger, Deshaun Mills. And I tell you, I was just about to give up on this Glenn Tolliver. He's been really struggling in that shotgun, but he calmly took his time. And it looked like the same play that he hit to Rosaki Hill in the first half. Picked up Deshaun Mills, breaking off. Nice little lob over the defense, right into the hands of Deshaun Mills. And Mills only had one man to beat at the line there. As you see, he stutter stepped and went right into the end zone. Look at the time. Look at the offensive line just piling up the white jerseys. All That's a beautiful throw. thing to see. Indeed. And I think that would give Tolliver a lot of confidence if his offensive line could continue to give him time to make those kind of throws. Jurast to tack on the extra point, oh. snap back and fumbled by Burton. And that's gonna do it again. So th three times, this, this game would have been tied. But it, it's 21 to 18. Luzinger is continuing to shoot themselves in the foot, just can't get the extra points, can't get crucial third downs, can't make the big play. Outside has the defense. Uh, oh. Well, let's see. Then we get a reprieve. Oh, they're going to get Aona some. Aona Kavienga is the long snapper. They're going to get another shot at this, I do believe. Yeah. I'll bet you uh, that that glass of water sitting there, uh, Reynard, that uh, they're going to go for two. I think that'd be a safe bet right about now, <laughs> Coach. Certainly with the ball moved half a distance to the goal, sitting almost inside the one-yard line. Gee, I think we could almost go down and make this one with just one good block. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, okay. <laughs> Put me in, Coach. Uh, so no. Tolliver, 26-yard pass to Mills, and those two hooked up. How many times did they do that? They, uh, well, I thought they hooked up a couple of times. They did. Uh, Mills did get 
Yeah, two touchdowns last week, 86 and 62 yards last week. So three touchdowns in two games for Deshaun Mills. Well, let's see what Coach Tolliver and the Olympians have come up with here. I'm real curious to see what he's going to run. And uh, he hasn't had much success going up the middle. I'd almost uh, like to see him fake it up. And as I was telling you earlier, one of my favorite players, that naked bootleg, and when they're this close, uh, the defense tends to bite on anything just about him. If he can get to the outside, Tolliver looks like he's not going to do that, though. Nearly fumbled that. He did fumble it. And he sure did. Just didn't get it to Rosaki Hiltz on the handoff. So still no good. They had a... Had that wrapped up in a nice bow. I don't mean to question Coach Tolliver, but I, I tend to believe with the size of my team, I think being a half a yard from a touchdown or extra point, I think we would have just almost quarterback snuck that ball. I mean, I don't, you know, when you hand off, you're, you're starting back deeper, you're giving the defense a chance to penetrate, and that's exactly what happened then, coupled with the fumble. Just couldn't get it going, couldn't get it done. There you see the coaching staff. Now they're just after 11.26 left to go in the ball game, down by three points. Plenty of time as you see some of the fans that have traveled down here from Luzinger support their guys. And they always travel well. It's always good to see them on the road, some familiar faces, some friendlies, if you will, in the stands. There you go. Because you know what, sometimes the, the uh, folks at visiting stadiums aren't really friendly they to even the little, broadcasters. They can be a little hostile sometimes, <laughs> kid. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, and indeed, oh, we've had a warm reception We're going to see an onside kick. Ah, there it is. Nope. As it goes, into the did it go out of bounds? No, it just went all the way down. Okay, a squib kick. That uh, got out of my eyesight. My eyes aren't that good to begin with. That's all right. I, I kind of lost it, too. I, I think we were looking at the kicking tee. It what, went about 10 yards. Yeah, say, oh, pounce on it. Oh, that's, yeah. the, that's the tee. Oh, okay. So it uh, looks like they're going to have to start this uh, long drive now, starting out at their own 20. But uh, Legacy hadn't had a problem with moving the ball. They just had a hard time in executing when they really needed to. They've kind of shot themselves in the foot with a number of the penalties as well as Bublovich. Hands it back to Gallegos. And Gallegos just carrying people with him. The little train that could carries it up to the 25-yard line, a five-yard gain for Vince Gallegos. There's uh, big things come in small packages. 5'4", 140 pounds, you're looking at him. That's, that's with his equipment on. <laughs> well, I tell you, he is running with a mission. And this young man right now has to be my player of the game. I mean, he has really put in the workload to really keep that Luzinger defense honest. He's pressured the front. He's ran up inside. He's ran outside. And they haven't been able to really spread out and make them do anything different. He's carried the ball for 19 times now and was stuffed on that play by Patty Lealua. And the defense from Luzing are stepping up right now. They know how big this stop can be for his offense. They must get the ball back to their team with some decent field position because Luzing has not shown that they can move the ball great distances. They've got to work the short field in order to put up some scores, looks like. So a big third down play for the defense. It's third and five. Three receivers in the formation. Tight end to the near side. One man in the backfield. Bublitz back to pass. Has good protection and in and out of the hands of Sears. And again, it looked like he just wanted to catch it and run. That's the second one that Sears has dropped here in the second half. And I don't know if uh, he's got uh, the wrong gloves on or if he's not thinking uh, what's going on. But I mean, it, it's just, I, I'm confused. He made so many, he made a one-handed catch earlier. He's had some over the top of catches and the you know easiest is, catch you he can't make. That's what it is. He didn't have anybody making anybody on him so he could make the ESPN grab. You're looking for the highlight reel. That's right? it. Well, I'm sure that's something that the coaches will uh, definitely talk to him about on that trip back to Colorado. That's a long bus ride. Oh, they're taking the plane these days, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> I should hope so. 
Okay, uh, in the minor league days, that was, uh, that wouldn't have been from, a long trip, would it? Went from Grays Harbor, Washington, back to Mission Viejo, California on a bus after a night game for a day game. Oh, man, better you than me. Oof, I tell you, that's a lot of coffee in the morning when you get there. You mean they let them kids drink coffee? <laughs> <laughs> that's all the <laughs> caffeine, nicotine, you name it, those guys. <laughs> a lot of fun, a fun group that was. The Mission Viejo Vigilantes of the old Western Baseball League. But Bublitz now, actually, uh, it is losing her ball. Bublitz couldn't get it done. Tolliver back to pass. Good protection over the middle. Has to throw it away because here, there comes the pressure. And First and 10. Looks like and do we have a flag on the field? Looks like they had their signals mixed up there. Somebody thought they were going deep, Second namely down, the Lucy. quarterback, Tolliver. And apparently, uh, number eight, Washington, thought that it was going to be a break off and uh, Outside, he broke it off too early for Tolliver and he just aired it out. Then we have a uh, first penalty I think of the second half. No, third. Third, yeah. okay. Not a problem. But definitely not something that Luzinger needed here. No. Because now they're staring at a first and 15 and they have not shown the ability to put Five three minutes, downs three, together and, and pick up first four, down yeah. in any Outside, consistent three. manner. So Tolliver looking at Derwin Henderson to see what the play is. Four wide receivers, two to either side in the pattern. Tolliver back to pass. Here comes the pressure. And that one just didn't develop right as Tramel Mitchell was looking for that screen pass that never developed. Well, Mitchell's a little guy, and I think when he turned around and couldn't really see over the backs or the defense who were uh, penetrating, Kind of got lost here, as you see in the replay. And Tolliver might have been a little anxious, but no, I think uh, they just got lost. I don't think he saw the ball coming. Either that six. or he saw Alan Tucker in his face. Yeah, 76 is a big guy, 6'2", 215. Defensive lineman really was putting the pressure on both the quarterback, and then it turned to go to Mitchell. Second and 15, Tolliver back to pass, gets good protection, has to get rid of it, does, caught at the 44-yard line by Deshaun Mills. Gets up to the 41 after he's banged down from behind by Bo Yurko. And what a nice pass and catch from Tolliver to Mills. And that's the third time we've seen this play work. Tolliver's just a three-step drop, waiting on his receiver to break. And a nice lob over the linebacker, and there he is with the catch. And he was looking for some distance and looking for some room to run. Ooh. Couldn't get outside before the stop by number two there. That was Bo Yerko. So another big hit by the Lightning, but a 20-yard gain by the Olympians. And the delayed handoff yeah, is to time. Brown. Yeah, Brown squirrels his way up to a five-yard gain about the 36-yard line. And that yeah, guy gave him the 37-yard line. And that, that guy we've been calling his name out all day, Nick Casa. Hanging on for dear life as you see him there, reach in, hold on, hold on. He's still holding on and goes in till the rest of his uh, guys come in to help him on the tackle. So a nice gain of four yards for Joshua Brown, who is taken over for Mitchell at the tailback slot. Pass is caught, gets away from a man at the 25 yard line. A good catch and run by Deshaun Washington for another losing your first down. And now the Olympians are starting to move the ball on the smaller Lightning squad. Well, we were wondering when the speed was going to take over, and it looks like Coach Tolliver at halftime finally got his guys to understand that all we've got to do is get the ball out to our speedy wideouts and let them make a play. Excellent as he shook off one tackle, couldn't nice. get the block on number two as Yerko was right there to make the stop, but not until he picked up the big first down sitting at the 25-yard line. Henderson calling each play as he sees the defense for Tolliver, who hands the ball off on another delay oh, drop. Play, and the ball goes down. Who's got it? Oh, this could be crucial. Yeah. Oh, it goes over to Legacy. Number Third 52. fumble lost by a Losinger. Ryan Paulson, number 52, the Ryan defensive Paulson end right there to pick it up. And I can't tell you, that has got to be demoralizing as you see the ball right there fall into the hands of Ryan Paulson. And it looked like, as you mentioned, the Luzinger Olympians were starting to really put a decent drive together. But turnovers, again, rear their ugly heads. That's it. 
from the 24-yard line, and this legacy team with a three-point lead can eat up the rest of the clock the way that they've been playing. Well, they've put together some pretty uh, long drives, Renard. Well, I tell you, if they can put together about two or three first downs here, I would venture to say this can just about be over. Out of the eye, Bublitz still has it. He's going to keep it. Gets out of bounds at the 30-yard line, and let's see what we have. We've got a flag, and I don't know why he would have gone out of bounds. The coaches should have been telling them, we want the clock to roll, stay in bounds. That's right. Now let's see what Frank Johnson's going to call. Is it going to be a hold? I think it's holding. I thought I saw some up in there. I, I want to call number 75 out, but let me see the replay before I say. Yeah, it is holding. Let's see if we can see where it is on the replay. And that I think it came off of that offensive line. Watch number 74 there at the top of your screen. Uh, can't see it right there. And he's turned him loose. Uh, well, that's big old Otis Brown. So that's yep. the only, th you got to saddle him up to bring him down. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, that was a big penalty. And Lou Zinger needed that. That's a big break. It goes all the way back to the 19-yard line. So a net, a 10-yard penalty goes all the way back to the 19. So a net five yards on the call. Well, they don't need to relax right here. They need to keep the pressure up and not let these guys pick up a first down. So first and 15, it's a draw play. Gallegos is hit at the line of scrimmage and falls forward to the 21. So a good defensive pursuit by Luzinger. Yes, and you've got the main guys, those two linebackers, Soafa and Kavinga in there on the big stop for the loss. Looks like it might have been a loss of one maybe, or did he pick up a yard? He picked up two on that. Okay, fell forward, his momentum took him uh, into some positive territory, but still second and about 13. That's going to bring up, uh, I think they're going to probably have to go to the air, but they're trying to take the clock out of this. I keep it on the ground. That was Gallegos' 20th carry of the ball game, Renard. 6.57 left to go, three point lead Seven and another eight. whistle. And let's see what it is. It came from the back judge, Steve. Delay of game. Smart, smarties. So a delay, usually the back judge will call that. He keeps the official clock. And I've often wondered whether a coach would rather have that play of the five-yard penalty or whether he'd like for the clock to be rolling right about now. <laughs> <laughs> right now? <laughs> Let's keep that thing rolling, rolling, rolling. Oh, man. It's got to be making uh, Coach Voorhees really wonder what's going on. We've got the perfect opportunity here now to just suck the clock right up. We've had a penalty. We've had two penalties. And we're still at 6.54. We started this drive at around 7.48. You know, I wonder if Coach Voorhees is going to carry a yellow flag with him uh, for a false start going on to the Disneyland rides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure he will. Here comes another flag. Man. Now Bublitz is beside himself and says something to Frank Johnson. Delay of game Another again. Another delay of game. What's going on here? Well, that plays right into the hands of the Olympians as this is going to go back to the 11-yard line. They need to get back to the 34-yard line for a first down. And look at here. They've come out quickly, and now Luzinger may have to call a timeout for not being ready. And a timeout is called. Nope. Well, by Legacy. Six minutes and 54 seconds. Wow, Losinger was the one who had to get out there quick. Yeah, I would have thought they needed to make well, the call. Let's go. Let's see if we can get a shot of the referee and the head coach on the other side near the 20-yard line. Yeah, I think Coach Verz is trying to get an explanation as to why that ball has got to be snapped so quick. And it's like, what clock are you using there, ref? That's right. In mountain time, we go by second. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a uh, Bay League officiating crew, so... Uh, you can see they're in a deep conversation over there. Coach Voris says, I can't believe we've had two penalties called on us for delay of game both times. That back was to a, back. That was a quick one. That was. I have to admit, that second one seemed a little quick. That's a, either the batteries are running out or their new batteries in the watch, or somebody wound it a little too tight. Well, let's see. I don't think uh, they're going to get a reverse call here. So it's second down and 23 yards to go for the Lightning. 21 to 18, Legacy has the lead in the ball. Looks like they've got to go just this side of Dana Point to pick up a first down. <laughs> uh, 
on the other side of the railroad tracks. 6.54 left to go in the fourth quarter. And it's a bootleg, actually, a, it's Bublitz with it. It overthrows everybody. And Bublitz on the rollout inside of his own end zone. Otis Brown was there chasing him down. And had Bryson Romero, the 6-1 uh, junior tight end, turned around a little bit sooner. He might have been able to pick that ball up. But as you mentioned, the pressure that was being put on Bublitz, he had to get rid of it. And uh, he got rid of it in the near area. Watch this drop back, as you mentioned, all the way back into his own end zone. Got plenty of time before Brown started to put pressure on him. And then he got rid of it. And uh, you now see maybe the wide receiver there just not looking or didn't get his head turned around quick enough. Maybe Otis did get in the way enough to cause that uh, play to go awry. But anyway, here we are. Biggest third down play of the ball game for both sides. Back to pass is Bublitz. Going to throw it on the timing pattern and trying to go to Sears. And it's knocked down. Let's look for flags. Yes, there is. Mm, that looks like that might be interference. And what I think Lou Zinger has decided to do, they put a taller defender out there to try to compensate for the height that uh, they were experiencing with. Uh, I think it's Samaji Harris out there at 5'11". Let's see where the pass goes. Samaji Harris and Deshaun Mills. And the pass was there. Harris knocked Sears out of bounds. And let's see what the call I is. Let's see where the interference is. The ball had already gone through. Holding. Holding, yes. defensive holding, and that's good enough for it could be, well, let's see. All right, this is that's back on the other side, though, but what about the flag that was at where the pass was? It looks like they picked that one up and just went with that. If we could see a replay, I'd like to see if we could pick up that hold. I didn't see him uh, holding because clearly uh, Sears had ran away from the defender, and the only person that was back there was Harris. All right, so it goes up to the 21-yard line on Here's the 10-yard. Here's the replay yard. again. Let's see if we can pick up the hold that the officials say they saw. Right there. It's certainly not out there, so it I must have been up earlier. All right, so big third down play comes over, but it's third and 13. Bublitz back to pass. Fresh. Looks over the middle. Goes for the swing pass. No. Ooh, a big stop by Losinger. It's fourth down now. And 10 yards to go. And did you see Cavienga put the hit on Gallegos? He should have went down on the second hit. He tried to fight and muscle it, and Cavienga said, no, you don't. You should have went down. Watch this hit. Had a couple of blockers, but then and there's Kavienga. a hole. Oh, and then Cavienga said, oh, you turn me loose, and you're not through. Bam! Oh, helmet to helmet. That so hurts. Mitchell held him up just long enough for the headhunter, Aona <laughs> Cavienga. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think uh, Guy Eagles will think about going down a little quicker next time. All of that for three yards. Yep, that'll, shut you, that'll, that'll make your career a little short at running back. So it's a big fourth down and 11. Now, do you, th you don't think that Voorhees is going to call a tricky play here, do you? Uh, I think they're a little too deep in their own end zone oh, area of the field here. I think he's going to just kick it away. High spiral kick, It's unless it takes an Olympian uh, bounce and it takes a losing uh, legacy bounce, but still terrific field position for Losinger at their own 41-yard line with five minutes and 40 seconds left to go, and they dodged a bullet. Here's one stat here, uh, Renard, as Bublitz is only two out of, or three out of seven for 18 yards in the second half. That's the pressure that Coach Tolliver talked about, his defense needing to put on the quarterback from Legacy. He had just entirely too much time in the first half to do what he wills, and now here in the second half, Lou Zinger has tightened the screws a little bit, but more importantly, can they go 59 yards in 540? Well, a big three minutes and eight seconds were chewed off the clock by the Lightning. And I tell you, Lou Zinger needs a touchdown, not a field goal. Harris back into motion as a Tolliver. Oh, as it almost picked Harris off as that slipped through about three or four pairs of hands. Harris and also Washington were in the neighborhood, the intended receivers. Man, that's a dangerous pass as two or three defenders had a shot at that ball after Tolliver. Looked like he had plenty of time to survey the field and pick a receiver out. 
And then he went to the wrong one after it looked like he got tipped. Looked like he wanted to go on top there. Had a man at the far side. And if he'd have thrown it to the outside, giving him a chance to run under it, I think that might have been the play. But he chose to go over the middle. It got hit by one of the linebackers, and that threw it all off. Second down and 10. Justin Kemp was on that Ooh, far side. Under Look pressure. out. Throws it. And oh. That was dangerous as well, as Kemp tried to come back for that one. But pressure is what stopped the completion on that pass because he had a guy hanging on to him is why he couldn't get enough under it to make it reach. Watch uh, number 20 here putting the pressure on him. And that's Guerrero. And Guerrero is, uh, I think, the one that uh, busted that play up because he was hanging on him. Tolliver couldn't get enough on it to make it reach. Now Henderson calls in the play to his quarterback. Glenn Tolliver, three men, four, three men in the pattern up top, one on the bottom. Tolliver back to pass, has good time, throws, and is caught for a first down inside of Legacy Territory. And that was Rasaki Hilt with the first down catch. And Hilt back into the game again and is so much needed. Not to mention that big first down he just picked up to keep Luzinger rolling. And I tell you, with 5.17 left here, that was a big play to also, keep the momentum going. He got out of bounds. That's what I was just about to allude to, is stop the clock, more importantly. So he got out of that tackle, and uh, Nate Pickens tried to do a Kavienga, but Hilt said, nah, I'll just go out of bounds, thank you. Hello. Tolliver back to pass, looking deep. Now comes underneath the Mills inside the 30-yard line. First down, Losinger. I really like the route hit the young man there just ran. Deshaun Mills broke down at about the 30 and then hit it off to the outside. Pass was in the air waiting on him, and he just grabbed it and brought it down. Here you see Tolliver in the shotgun going back, looking for Mills, waiting on him to clear as he broke across the middle. And then Tolliver just lobs it out there, and he's there waiting on it. The defender, number 19, just a little late getting there for the tackle. Tolliver out of the shotgun. Three receivers to the near side. Tolliver on the end around to Mills. Mills at the 30. Mills just dove down and... Uh, Took the easy way out of the 25-yard line. Looked like he uh, gave up on that. Uh, I don't know. He's limping now like he may have hurt himself. May have got his uh, cleats caught in the uh, turf down there. But uh, here you see on the reverse, got by the one defender there who had penetrated. That's Guerrero. But then when he got around here, he ran right into three defenders from Legacy and decided to just go down. Second down and eight yards to go. All that running for a couple of yards at the 25-yard line. Four wide receivers. Tolliver looks over the middle. Now look out. Fumble. Did he lose the ball? It's still on the ground, and Legacy's got it. The fourth fumble by Losinger. Yep. And the fourth fumble that they have lost on a big blitz. The and that one could take the wind out of your sails. The four turnovers that Losinger has had in this game have all been fumbles. And you can tell they're holding it like a loaf of bread right there, and it falls down on the ground. As it was forced by Sean Jenkins, and the ball was piled on by one of the linebackers. That has got to be demoralizing, and no doubt the biggest play for Legacy thus far, because if they can sustain a first down here, that might be it. There's goes Gallegos. Gallegos gets free and gets across the 40-yard line to the 41, and a first down, that keeps the clock, clock rolling with 3.53. Actually, it won't because he did get the first down, so they have to move the chains. Very close. I think they're waiting to see if it is, in fact, the first down. Yes, it is. The official says it is. And that's one of the two first downs I think they need to ice this game. If they get another one. We're going to really find out what this uh, losing team is made out of. So that was Gallegos' 21st carry of the game. Just give it to the sure-handed kid. First and 10 from the 42-yard line. Man in motion. Give it to Gallegos and gets Ooh. hit from behind and hit off. Oh, late hit maybe. Nope. 
got to watch out for that. That was a close late hit as uh, I think what happened, frustration kind of set in because he missed the first tackle, went back to get him and said, let me just get a shot here. As you see Gallegos hitting up in the middle there, eludes one tackler, gets by another one almost, and then here comes number one almost late. Ooh, that was really close. Taufa got in there late. Washington made the hit. Also, Cavienga was in there. But it was a loss of three on that play, so well, they're calling it a loss of two. Gonna make it second and 12, Luke. Big play for Lusinger's defense. Pass in and out of the hands. Is that Sears again? Still going for the big guy. I think that one was a little underthrown, a little low, and he just wasn't able to pick it up fast enough. And that's gonna bring up a big third down and 12. Low and inside. Well, went right through his arms almost. That's even so worse. Again, that's what the, the third ball that could have been caught by Travis Sears tonight. And I'm sure that's something uh, that he and uh, Bublovich will be working on next week. Well, let's see if Heck they if can. they got a wide body plane right on. They may be doing it on in, the the, plane. in the plane. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Big third down, Lou. Might be the game. Here comes Gallegos, has some blockers, gets up to the middle and oh, most of the 50 yard line, but is stopped short by Losinger's defense, Samaj Harris. Now you so asked me earlier if uh, I had a trick play or if you thought Louis Legacy had a trick play. Here's where I think I might pull it out. I'd have to go for this fourth and one. Absolutely. So fourth and one, 50 yard line. If I lose it, Losinger hadn't shown that they can march or consistently go down the field. I think I'd have to, and look like that's exactly what they're going to do is go for it here because the first down here, game's over. An 11 yard gain for Gallegos. Fourth down, two minutes left to go in the ball game. Two yards to go. Got a big push up front, double tight end set for Bublitz and the Lightning. Home. Stay home, defense. Everybody up in the oh. box, and Cavienga on the timing pattern gives it to him. That's the game. Penalties and turnovers cost Losinger this ball game. And no doubt, that's the penalty that will be remembered. That's the one that basically took the ball out of Losinger's hands, or at least them having any shot. As you see, Kavinga is just trying to anticipate the snap a little too early. And I tell you, that might be a play he's going to wish he had back for a long time. So mistakes, and they ran out of toes shooting them off tonight. I tell you, I've got uh, Lou Zinger with 12 unofficial penalties here in this game, and uh, I think most teams that have that many penalties, you can pretty much say are losers or and, have lost the game. And four lost fumbles. Gallegos with it. Gallegos, Gallegos right. does a cartwheel to the 40-yard line as Cavienga was there to trip him up. And the clock Lou is rolling, 137, Lou, and looks like Lou Zinger just called the timeout to stop it. But that might be a little too, little too late. As Gallegos going to the right side. And this young man still running hard. I was wondering if he was going to be able to sustain it the entire game. And again, as I mentioned, I am really impressed with him and his running ability here against a much larger uh, defense, and I think uh, he's really uh, earned his uh, cookie after the game tonight. Gets my old Timex watch award of the game. <laughs> Took a licking, and he's still ticking. I tell you, that young man definitely needs a, a game ball. He is going to. He's going to need an ice bath at the hotel later on. Yeah, I don't think he'll be too uh, much in a hurry to go to Disneyland tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you know, you go to Space Mountain, that'll cure a lot of things. <laughs> Or going that that falling haunted house thing. Oh, haven't been on it in years. Oh man. Well, hey, the submarines are back, man. You got to go see uh, uh, that, Nemo. Think, yeah, that I think I can handle. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Won't upset your stomach. Uh -uh. All right, second down. One thirty-seven left to go in the game. Gallegos gets it again. Oh, gets free into the backfield, and a first down, and that should wrap things up. As Gallegos. Gets an eight yard gain out of that one. And I'm sure Coach Tolliver has got to be wondering what happened. And I can tell him in one word, penalties. Yep, penalties and those, they, the 
they had they, the uh, losing your Olympians had the ball down at the 25 yard line and we're going for it and another fumble they had the the ball deep in their territory a couple of times and lost the ball. four turnovers on fumbles mm -hmm. 12 penalties and uh, a lot of them crucial that's a recipe for disaster certainly is and Dion Tolliver the head coach right now is not his smiling self and he's got to be disappointed because I'm sure after talking with him after he came out at halftime, he knows his guys can play much better than this. And the failure on special teams. Mm, we haven't even touched on that. That's right. As uh, Kavienga, the long snapper, kept going to the left of uh, Burton. Because the, if the you holder. give Luzinger the extra points, we got a 21-21 game. Absolutely. Yeah. And it seemed like legacy has been – holding the play to losing her most of the game. Mm -hmm. So this is another one that has slipped away. Yep. And it's a learning process and these guys are gonna learn, that's for sure. And this is gonna be a big, unfortunately, a big bitter pill to swallow for this the Olympians as we get closer to Bay League action. And I guess the only good thing is, is that it is a non-conference game for losing her. And uh, if there's any good thing to come out of this, they haven't lost the Bay League yet. That's true, and uh, they had the destiny in their own hands last year. Lost uh, a couple of heartbreakers, one to Miracosta. To West Torrance. And to West. And to and Redondo. Uh, they, they beat Redondo oh, that's right. in, a, in a thriller, mm -hmm. and uh, then went to Highland Lancaster in the first playoff game and lost that one. As Bublitz will go to a knee again, and he'll have to do that one more time. This has got to be a sour pill for Coach Tolliver to have to swallow. Now, after uh, coming off of the huge high of taking on the crosstown rival Lawndale Cardinals and beating them 57 to 15, uh, albeit it was Lawndale, the very uh, thin team, uh, they were still game, that's for sure. And uh, we heard uh, Dion Tolliver, the head coach, say he wasn't real happy with the performance of the defense and the way the second half uh, really played out. Well, no doubt he won't be happy with this one either. And uh, I can tell you from experience, most coaches that lose like this, uh, they don't get over it in the season. It takes a while before they ever get over it. Because as you mentioned, this was one they let get away, had it. And that's it, Losinger loses by three. 21 to 18. PATs, fumbles, and penalties cost them the ball game. I don't know what more to say to that because that's exactly the game in a nutshell. Legacy travels here from the Denver, Colorado area, well represented in numbers, even brought some of their family and friends from that area. And the players got out there and played like it was a home game for them. Sure did, uh, but uh, the passing game for Lusinger. It's a new day for the Olympians. They have to try to get that offense in gear. Glenn Tolliver having another terrific ball game, throwing three touchdowns. But uh, again, it, uh, you have to wonder, how are they going to shore up the little things that were so big in this ball game? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a little concerned that this is a carryover from last year, as you alluded to earlier in the broadcast. This was from what I saw, the same Luzinger team from last year. They got behind, never got it together, trailed the entire game, penalties and things stopped them. The momentum seemed like it swung once or twice, but they never really got the confidence, I think, to just smash it and run it and get control of the game. And uh, they gave Legacy too many opportunities. They hung around and uh, came away with the victory. 21 to 18, uh, the confidence was there, Renard in the second half as they came out fired up mm -hmm. stopped the lightning scored and, quick. and then scored that quick touchdown and uh, it was just seemed like a, an out of control confidence they need to put that confidence in a bottle much like legacy puts their lightning in a bottle well we were looking at the uh, daily breeze article and this was uh, exactly what the uh, sports writer said about this losinger team last year or he said you know they just didn't know how to finish the season didn't know how to finish the game there you see coach Boer is talking to his guys and he's got to be ecstatic that they came all the way here to southern california and pulled out a victory 
I'm sure he's probably a little disappointed with the penalties that his team uh, had, but no doubt he's got to be happy with the win. We're going to see if we can not talk to some of the coaches uh, later, on, uh, later on here, but first, why don't we take this timeout as Losinger goes down 21 to 18 to Legacy. And this is Channel 22 Sports. Twenty-one to eighteen was our score. Losinger goes down to Legacy of Denver, or well just outside of Denver, Broomfield, Colorado, to be exact. And a lot of lessons to be learned for the Olympians. Uh, they're really going to have to shore up the penalties, dropping the ball. Three fumbles in the second half really cost the Olympians, especially deep in their own end zone. Tolliver dropped it uh, at about the twenty-five yard line, and that really spelled doom as the, uh, the go-ahead touchdown was within their grasp. But 21 to 18, and Renard Ricks has the winning coach downstairs. Thank you, Lou. I'm here now with Coach uh, Wayne Voris and Coach, congratulations on a big win. Thank you very much. It was, it was a well-deserved uh, win. Kids played hard, and we're, we're excited to come out here and play a game. So what did you take from this game? I know it's still early in the season. You traveled a long distance. Uh, there were some problems with your team's efficiency, but efficient enough to get a win. It was, and, and we were excited to come out here and play. We wanted to give our kids a bowl game experience early in the season. We're just hoping to kind of come together as a team and, and really build and, and keep improving. So what did you tell your team after uh, the game? <laughs> it's an ugly win is better than a loss. So uh, we're excited. We accomplished our goal, which is to come out here and win a football game, and, and that was the whole goal of our trip, and we're excited. we got to get better for next week. It's our homecoming game. So uh, if you had to say one of the things that you took away from this game that really was good, uh, what would that be? Uh, to kind of go through adverse conditions and traveling out here and, and playing a good football team. They, they came out and they played hard and, and they uh, you know, kept coming at us down after down and never gave up. And, and it really tested the character of our team. Let me take a minute to talk to you about some of the penalties. Uh, as you mentioned, an ugly win. And that's a, it's a win, though, nevertheless. But uh, definitely both teams, did we really see – uh, the legacy team with the number of the penalties that we saw? I don't think so, and we just need to continue to execute better. And it, and it comes down to the little things of being mentally disciplined and, and especially in third and long situations, not getting a holding penalty. And, and one of the things we struggled with is the, the rule in California. We're looking for the back judge to make a uh, call and had it backfired on us a few times. We didn't figure it out until the fourth quarter. So uh, we take it you know, for what it's worth, and, and we'll move on. Let me ask you before I let you get away. I saw you talking to the referee uh, after that second quick uh, whistle for delay of game. Uh, what was that conversation like? I just asked him. I said, normally we're getting a count, and the back judge is, is throwing the flag without giving us a count. And he said, we don't do that in California. Ah, so uh, a little California twist there for you. There is. Uh, well, good, Coach. Congratulations again on Thank the big you. win, and uh, congratulations, and good luck the rest of the way. Appreciate it. All right. Back up there to you, uh, Luke. All right, thank you very much, Renard. A good job. And Renard Ricks joining us tonight on the Channel 22 Friday Night Game of the Week broadcast. And Legacy comes out on top 21-18. to 18. The special teams of Losinger uh, was very flat. Uh, the snap couldn't get back to the uh, holder, to Sean Burton, and uh, just couldn't get anything going on the extra points. And the two-point conversion tries uh, just didn't get things done either. So lots of work to do for Losinger as uh, they come up on another big game next week as they are at Norco next week. And that is not an easy task at all because uh, those Wildcats are certainly uh, have their teeth bared as uh, Norco came to Losinger last year. Now Losinger has to go to their house. But uh, as you heard, Coach Wayne Voorhees say it's uh, their homecoming game, and they play Rocky Mountain, and uh, that's going to be uh, their first 5A Front Range League game uh, outside of Denver in Broomfield, Colorado, uh, next week. And so good luck to them as they ride off into the sunset. And we have uh, another guest down uh, downstairs with Renard Ricks. As uh, Coach Gle uh, Dion Tolliver is going to join Renard Ricks and uh, uh, very gracious in defeat and I'm sure Renard will ask him all the questions that need to be asked. Thank you very much. I'm now here with Coach Tolliver and Coach, uh, got to be a tough loss for you. Yeah, it was a very tough loss. Uh, the guys played hard, but uh, 
It was a, yeah, it was a tough loss. It was a tough loss. What did you tell them uh, at the end of the game? I know it. Uh, you maybe can't tell me everything, but share with our audience a little bit of uh, what you told the kids to try to keep their spirits up. Uh, we just told them that that was that was one loss, and it was better to get it early than to get it late. And now we know what the, now we know how it feels to lose. We know how it feels to win, and we want to see which one we want to do the most. You know, and we want to win. So I think the kids can learn from the mistakes, and I think we'll come out better next week. Talk to me a little bit about those mistakes that you felt your team was making tonight that uh, certainly I'm sure is not the uh, type of team that you uh, are trying to build over at Luzinga. So uh, what was it? Uh, it was just mental errors, uh, turnovers. The turnovers pretty much killed us. I think we had five turnovers. And uh, we got down there inside the 20, I think, two times, and we turned the ball over. And then one time we turned it over when, they were co when we were uh, coming out of the 20. And uh, mistakes like that you can't have it. Get to be a winning football team, you can't do that. So I had four turnovers being fumbles alone yeah. and somewhere in the neighborhood of about 12 penalties. Yeah. None of those penalties helped you in any sense. And uh, did that hurt your team and their momentum? That hurt us. Uh, hurt us bad. And that's the same thing that we pretty much have been going through and we're trying to work on it. We're trying to work on that mental aspect of the football game. And uh, every day of practice, we continue to work on it. And uh, I'm hoping for the Bailey, we'll, we'll get it down. So back to the drawing board? Back to the drawing board. Figure out how to stop these penalties, how to stay focused, and uh, how to not lose our cool and jump outside so much. But that's pretty much what it was outside. Now, I'm sure most of the penalties uh, are probably mental errors, as you alluded to earlier. Yeah. Uh, was Kavinga just trying to, that last uh, penalty that really, I think, broke the back here of uh, your team tonight, was that just kind of a, uh, he was gambling and hoping he was going to get lucky? No, we called the play, and uh, he, he, I think he, from playing in the game, the whole game, I think he thought he had the, the quarterback's countdown, and he just, I guess it was just a mental mistake. He tried to, he tried to get, the, he's trying to make a play. Mm -hmm. You know, he's always out there trying to make a play. I know you've probably seen that. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, he was over, he was over excited. He wanted to make that play, he wanted to stop it because he wants to win. And no doubt he feels uh, as bad as anyone on your team, I'm sure, because of what that penalty basically did. But uh, again, like you mentioned, a lot of work for your team early in the season to take this loss, and no doubt uh, you'll be ready for the Bay League. Oh, we'll be ready. We'll be ready without a doubt. Well, congratulations, Coach. Uh, sorry for the loss, but we know that Luzing will be back. All right. Thank you so much. All right. All right, Lou, we'll throw it back up to you. Tough defeat for Coach Tolliver and the Luzinga Olympians. No doubt they've got their work cut out for them, but – the Bay League hasn't started yet. All right, thank you very much, Renard Ricks. Downstairs doing a terrific job. And uh, Dion Tolliver, gracious in defeat, 21 to 18, our final score. And, uh, well, I guess if you would have talked to Nick Bublitz downstairs or uh, better yet, the uh, uh, player of the game for Legacy, Vince Gallegos, where are you going to go now? Are they going to go to Disneyland? That's where they're going to go. Vince Gallegos, 25 carries, 87 yards, and a touchdown is our lightning player of the game. He had 13 carries and 46 yards in the second half. And, uh, boy, he took a pounding from the big defense as Vince Gallegos got a look at his number again. Five foot four, 140 pounds soaking wet. So a good game by Vince Gallegos in his uh, one of his first trips to California. And on the losing side, Glenn Tolliver, even though he had two big turnovers in the uh, second half, one turnover was uh, uh, in the third quarter that uh, left the ball, gave the ball back to the uh, uh, the Lightning, and then again to end the ball game uh, for the losing Olympians with 4:40. Uh, after the 4:40 mark, the big fumble by Tolliver really uh, sank the Olympians' chances. But Tolliver was 12 out of 20 for 214 yards and three touchdowns was 8 out of 12 and 135 yards and two touchdowns in the second half alone. So our player of the game for Losinger is Glenn Tolliver. You also have to tip your hat to number 12, Rosaki Hiltz, who was two out of, uh, had two catches for 70 yards and a touchdown, and Deshaun Mills had three catches for 64 yards. As uh, Tramel Mitchell had a tough go of it, as Tramel uh, just carried the ball 13 times, and was 10 out of eight, uh, 10 for 18 yards in the first half, and uh, uh, was 13 carries for 19 yards altogether. Well, that's going to do it from Labarge Stadium on the campus of Orange Coast College, where the Pirates were good hosts to Losinger and Legacy. The final score, 21 to 18. Our next broadcast on Channel 22 Sports will be Compton at Hawthorne.
So until next time, this is Lou Stowers for Renard Hicks and the Channel 22 crew saying so long for now.